Hello, welcome to Living La Vida Lockdown, the online comedy chat show hosted by me, Rob Mulholland. How are you? I hope you had a fun weekend of staying indoors and doing fuck all. Yeah. To be fair, this weekend, everyone stopped giving a shit, so I hope you had a nice time outside licking your grandma. Uh, with me today, we've got another brilliant lineup. To my side, we've got Gareth Munch. Hello, mate. How you doing, man? Not too bad, buddy. Thank you. How are you? I'm good, mate. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Uh, down in this corner, we have got Danny Deegan. How you doing, mate? I'm I'm good, thanks, Rob. It's a pleasure to see you, mate. <laughs> mate, that is the falsest intro I have ever seen in me fucking yeah, life. You have, you have never dreadful. been that nice to me ever in your fucking life. Well, you said yourself it's a chat show, innit? <laughs> yeah, that's true. We'll get the chat show vibes out of the way. Like, thanks for coming on, mate. Yeah, we'll talk to you about your uh, autobiography later. Uh, <laughs> but below me, we've got a returning guest. Uh, good to see you again. Hello, Fumby. How you doing, mate? I'm good, man. It's good to be back, man. Absolute pleasure to have you. So, like, Fumby's down in Hackney at the moment, aren't you? How's it going down there still, man? Yeah, it's the same minute. Like, everyone's just exercising. Yeah. <laughs> has, has that proper happened? Does that tipping point come where everyone's exercising? Yeah. There's traffic now. I saw traffic the other day. I said, why is there traffic? Yeah, there shouldn't be a traffic jam now. There is no reason for everyone to be out like that. It's unreal, man. Like, when the tip reopened in Manchester last week, every fucker was down there. Have some cardboard in your house for a bit. Right, just like wow. chill out. <laughs> so I know tip? you've ordered like the shit off Amazon, but fucking wind it in. It's just a bit of polystyrene, lads. In Manchester. Yeah, yeah, in Manchester. Like I live right near the, the near the dump because I'm fucking balling, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth, whereabouts are you? Who are you locked down with, man? What's your sitch? Uh, I'm in a little place just outside of Edinburgh, um, and I'm currently locked down with my girlfriend and my fucking parents. Mm. Yeah, which Ooh, is there's a mix. Yeah, it's not ideal, Rob. I will be honest with you. Uh, I was we what we had our own place, but um, we were living in uh fucking Tom Stade's house. Oh yeah, uh, when he was in London, but uh, circumstances dictated that he had to come back, so we were just fucking booted. I've always Tom, said Tom the Stade's a cunt. Booted us out. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. I'm fucking. It, man. I'm brutal, man. If I want to fucking go back to my home, <laughs> I'll fucking do that. <laughs> that is a very good Stade impression, to be fair. <laughs> he has been on the show, uh, but yeah, like, I'll, has I'll, he? I'll, yeah, I love words we get. Well, no one's doing anything at the moment, are they? So I can fucking get who I want. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? Know, it's a weird dynamic, man. With I the bet, man. I bet, about. like, it's, it's it's your parents, not hers. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Right. right. I think that's prop. Is that better or worse? You've got to be on better behaviour with your partner's parents, but, like, there's less, like, Well, I don't, history. because I don't at all, because her mum's uh, Jojo Sutherland. Yeah, exactly. So. Good for She's been on here a couple of times. She's a really good mate. Yeah, you don't, oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be on any behaviour at all with some Jojo. From day one, I've had fucking none of that. None of them meeting the parents scared. Oh, my it's fucking God. Jojo. Yeah, like Jojo has to be like the ultimate number one best like uh, stepmother in the world. Easy, a hundred percent. Yeah, she's fucking yeah. golden. Ah, yeah, like yeah. Well, there you go. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck your house off. Go live with Jojo. It's just no space, mate. Otherwise, I would have been a heartbeat. Yeah, on on real. Like, who are you with, Deegan? Like, are you, are you with anyone? Are you just locked down alone? No, mate, I'm alone, and it is definitely my preferred state. <laughs> my, just before the lockdown, so my my mum rang me and was like, "Oh, why don't why don't you come home?" Mm. So I've I've like I've made up a friendship <laughs> so that I can stay in York. I can't imagine anything worse than you're being. So you've got an imaginary friend in York, well, in, an imaginary flatmate <laughs> that, uh, that 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 basically needs me. I don't want them to be alone. <laughs> Oh, it's heavily asthmatic, my house, mate. I've got to stay here and do the shopping oh, for him. He's got, like, diabetes, type <laughs> 1 and 2. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Jo- Jojo Sutherland, uh, she, and you can remind her of this, she, um, I can't remember whose wedding it was, but she once spent half an hour at a wedding telling me how brilliant she thought I was. And how oh, that sounds like me. her. That sounds like her. And then at the end, she asked me why I chose the uh, stage name, Dave Twentyman. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, Kate, Kate, Katie Mulgrew's wedding. It was Katie Mulgrew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she's close to Yeah, it would be. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> Fun me for uh, like I, I don't know you you might not be aware of Dave Twentyman he's a he's a he's a he's a comedian from the north right that no, like, I don't I know Jojo I did that, I did the story with Jojo yeah man I don't know if Twentyman travels I think he sticks firmly to the <laughs> northwest the Twentyman <laughs> like you know if he can't get there on a day rider he's not fucking doing it. <laughs> 
That is weird, though. There are, like, sort of, like, little different camps of comedy, even within the UK, with it being a small country. Like, that's what sort of happened today. I've got mates from sort of three different... Stra the three stratas of UK comedy. We've got Gareth from Scotland, like, Deegan from the North, and Fumby represented London. Well, stroke Nigeria. <laughs> it's diversity. It's fine. <laughs> Mate, you are the diversity for this podcast. You are 100% of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a couple others, and it's always just been fucking like straight white dudes. Every like everyone, pretty much. Get to fuck! I've had more uh, than ha one. Eth I've had multiple ethnics on the same show. <laughs> well, they're not promoted on the YouTube channel. High up, mate. I'm not scrolling. <laughs> I, rest I shot them. I'm, I'm left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> mate, we'll fucking take it at this point. I have, I, yeah, like I, no, I think I've managed to keep my lineups just about, so I won't end up on a blog. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm a I'm a straight white male comedian. A lot of my friends are that as well. <laughs> That's the problem. Oh, I don't want it to come across like a, a like a dick or an attack. Oh, no, no, I, I know exactly where you stand. You fucking soy boy, social justice warrior, <laughs> <laughs> throwing me under the bus. Um, this this panel that I'm on. Is not uh, very actually, diverse. Rob, I do want to say that this podcast is a little bit problematic. Actually. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it wouldn't be the first time I've been accused of that. <laughs> Like, tell you what, I think problematic might be my least favourite word of all the words. Problematic is only ever used to shut down fun, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. I agree. Yeah, I don't know when we started using problematic. I don't even when it came up. Yeah, it does. Remember. It does feel like it wasn't a word that anyone used until about two years ago. Yeah, until social media came. Yeah, maybe that's the spread, isn't it? Like, we have like fucking changed everything all at once in one go, like. That's why I always find mad about the internet. Like, we just went, oh, let's change how we do everything in one go. Like, banking and dating and jobs and sport and t everything. We yeah. just changed it all in one go with, like, Twitter. And that's fucked. Well, Corona's changed how everything goes at this present moment. <laughs> Man, it is, yeah. Like, everything's fucking done, isn't it? Like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't share the panic of other people about return afterwards right like i think that there's been a lot of that in the last couple of days everyone's like ah, oh, 80 percent of music venues are going to close and all this and like i think we will lose a lot of venues and that but i also think there'll be new ones that come out of it and like you know like there's no way that people are going to not want entertainment after this no yeah no exactly i what i'm worried about is i think there's going to be a real divide of people are going to be angry at the people who do go back out. So once venues do reopen mm. and we're allowed to go back to our fucking livelihoods, anyone who goes out to support that, I think there's going to be a lot of people really hating them for doing so. Yeah, little fucking virgins. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the counter argument. Yeah, well, fucking, you're a virgin, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know how, like, well, I don't know how old everyone is on this, but, but, from 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 just off the top of my head, I think this is the third or fourth event in my lifetime where people have gone, nothing will ever be the same again. Yeah. yeah. And it yeah. always fucking is. It is, man. Yeah, like, this is it. Like, people act like there haven't been things like this happened in the past. <laughs> like, you know, they, they have occurred before and what we thought was normal life happened after them. Yeah. So, you know, we can get to there again. Like, you know, like, it's not as bad as, like, the Spanish flu. When was that? Like, 1919, just after yeah. a fucking world war. They had it. They, they finished a war, then this shit started. Yeah. Like, you know, we finished a season of Love Island, then this happened, <laughs> right? You know, like, it's not exactly the same fucking situation, is it? <laughs> it's just funny. I feel like gigging would be strange, though. Like, your first few gigs would be weird, man. Yeah. yeah. You, you've not done it for, like, what, three months now? Oh, mate, like, by the time we get back to doing proper gigs, it's going to be, like, I think a year all in. We've got, like, to be, for it being proper. Like, I'm, I'm just worried about crying. That's my main thing. I genuinely I'm worried. I'm crying. I know, oh. man, because I'm such a fucking <laughs> melt. I work so hard to try and squash my emotions down with toxic masculinity. I'm genuinely worried that I've been missing it so much that I'll walk on stage and be like, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> we reckon it a year before we start to gig. Yeah, like properly. I, th I think there'll be like social distant compliant gigs that are shit for a while, but... It's got to be like a full vaccine be before mad. we can do it properly, isn't it? I'd not, because the vaccine isn't going to. I mean, I, okay, hands up. I'll have to say now, 
I am a f- proper, proper moron. I know nothing. Oh, yeah. Anyone now, uh... who's coming to this podcast for serious discussion <laughs> yeah, and learning yeah. things is a fucking knobhead. Yeah. This is four wankers bullshitting. Yeah. yeah. But now that <laughs> that's right, the graphs away. away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sit down on the flip chart, Dagan. We're done. <laughs> but, like, no, nah, I don't think it's going to be um, uh, like a year. Nah. I, well, thanks, I reckon, for, thanks for that qualified opinion. <laughs> I reckon it will be. I, hey, hey, I gave the disclaimer. Um, I think it'll be, uh, surely about November. Surely. Based on? What's in my head? <laughs> this is it, man. I keep I'm seeing. Governor the Bums. store in August, so I'm hoping sooner than that. No chance. I mean, I'm booked. Like, you know, I'm 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 booked for the rest of the year. But like, I treat those bookings like they are not happening. Like, I'm just watching all. all the good ones one by one go away. Oh mate, like stop watching. It's over. Like, how have you not given up on them weeks ago? Like, as soon as this started, I gave up on oh, everything no, for the I, year. I have gave up on them, but I'm still. I'm looking at the. I'm looking at the diary. Mm. Going out, ah, Newcastle gone. Oh mate, <laughs> I, I've I've had a rough couple. Like, I have had a couple of weeks where I've had like I had exciting bookings in, and it's just been brutal, man. Just looking at the yeah. weeks that I would have had, like, I had a couple of international gigs, had some weekends at like my favourite clubs. Just like when those pop up in the notifications, it's just like, <sighs> like last week I had to sit at the exact moment when Leeds United should have been promoted to the Premier League and watch my girlfriend play Animal Crossing. That's what I was doing at the moment where I should have been in Leeds City Centre, bollock naked, running down the yeah. hedgerow, screaming. <laughs> yeah, I because I was like, because I, I was like, when was it? Would have been in March sometime. Uh, like yeah, middle of March, I was booked to go over to Amsterdam, uh, and I'd done some calculations, and I was like, because I'm a big Liverpool fan, so I was like, shit, I think I'm going to be in Amsterdam the weekend Liverpool clinched the Premier League. And I was quite gutted about it. So then when we lost to Watford, I was like, this is actually ace. That buys me an extra week so I can get back from Amsterdam to fucking go down to yeah. Liverpool and celebrate. And now that's all been fucking kiboshed. Do you think the league will come back? Sorry? Do you think the league will come back? I, I mean, I don't know. I I hope so, but I don't I don't know. I... Was it, was it Ger- Germany, the Bundesliga's? They tried to, but then they they tested some players and the entire Dynamo Dresden team had to go get quarantined immediately on the first day they tested. (laughs) So it's like, it hasn't gone well. There's three Brighton players have been tested positive as well. It's just, I can't see any situation in which it's not going to... I, yeah. I, look, right, I, I, I'm a Leeds United fan. I have more invested in this than most. You know, like, I, I want this season done. But like, look, he's a Liverpool fan. They're about to win the title. Yeah, I know, man. Yeah, mate, shit, first like, time, first time in thirty years, mate. mate. We've been out the Premier well, League sixteen years. Like we're both like Leeds and Liverpool are like this at the moment. We are. Yeah, like, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we, the, yeah. We, we have the same interests, right? Yeah, we yeah, want this 100%, shit 100%. done. And I 100%. and I think that is great. But can I just remind you, as a Bury fan, <laughs> who got booted out of the former, league, this, former Bury fan. <laughs> well, if this gets if this gets null and voided, technically. It was like five games into the season when we got kicked out. What, so so the, you hoping you get a reprieve? Well, apparently, like they are looking into like the possibility. So we could get kicked out twice within a year. <laughs> <laughs> that would be let genuinely us back in incredible. And then boot us out again. The thing uh, is, even if, even if they 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 cancel this season, we don't even know when another season can start. Well, that's that's a point, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That is a point. But surely, like the focus has to be finishing getting some sort of answer or resolution for this season. Well, and like I think our only hope or yeah, as Liverpool fans and stuff, is just the the sheer money involved in the Premier League could play a big factor. This is and it, I'm man. The hoping. legal costs and like the, the the lawsuits that will be like basically like any solution that isn't we finish the season will just unleash hell. But yeah. every other t- situation is going to unleash hell as well. Like I, like, I always from the start was like, right, finish the season when it's safe. Doesn't matter when it is. If it's in three years, finish it then, right? That, that's the only way to do it so there can be no real argument. But then yeah. there's also the discussion of like, you know, football clubs can't last that long. If they lose all the money from next year, that's another thing that's got to be factored in. So I'm getting to the point where I feel like at this point, if they can play the Premier League behind closed doors, great. I mean, like, closed doors football's shit, but like at least it finishes it. They've got to relegate people. That fucking amendment's dog shit. The, the, the clubs in the bottom are like, right, we'll do it as long as we don't get relegated. What's the point of fucking doing it then? The thing like, is, I if you're in the relegation zone, you are looking at the season like, if they bring back football, you're in a relegation zone. You're getting relegated. 
because there's yeah. no momentum, there's no fans, there's no <laughs> build off on. You're just coming cold turkey. Yeah, like, you're yeah. really good. I like who do you want an argument with? Yeah, yeah. Who do you want an argument with? Liverpool and Leeds fans or Norwich fans? Get them relegated. <laughs> <laughs> I think Liverpool have messed it have messed it up for themselves because mm. so this is there something like still like 106 Premier League games left yeah but like that you that... could stretch that out over a year and the only problem mm. with that is Liverpool only needs six points the Premier League could be done and dusted in two weeks in a fortnight and yeah. suddenly there's really nothing to play for yeah well like this is the thing is right Liverpool have won it like they have won the league, like you know. Well, they, not yet, mate. I know tech. I know. I know. I know that there's loads of cunts like you who find it very <laughs> funny to say that. But let's be real, they have fucking won it. I don't think you can. It's not about. I don't think it's about winning the league per se. Yeah, Liverpool have technically won the league, but I support Newcastle. We're technically sitting in the top four fight. Technically. <laughs> no, no, no. I think I actually think that is a a, a, a decent point that he. If Bobby makes that, to be fair, like there is, there's, there's way more. There is still a lot to be played for. Yeah, totally, that, that's lot. why we play the end of the season. You know, that's why yeah, we normally yeah, do that's it. That's why know? it exists. It, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. like, it, the, the problem with it is, like, I don't get why there wasn't ever a, a non-completion clause in like the rules. Surely there no should one be a... COVID nineteen coming. Do you see what I'm saying? No, no. But like, <laughs> you... fucking Bill Gates did. Did you see that? Video? Bill Gates, Bill Gates, Gates fucking did. Exactly. This. Yeah. Yeah. Bill like, Gates we knew that a pandemic might come. We didn't know what it would specifically be, and it doesn't even have to be a pandemic. There should have been a clause for if the end of the season can't be completed for X reason. Say there's a fucking nuclear holocaust. They should have put in a rule at least so that we weren't all scrambling around when we already knew what we stand to gain from any particular yeah. resolution. Because now you've got Leeds and Liverpool going, hey, we want, give us the titles. And then everyone else is going, well, we should play. You know, some people are going, we should play more because they want to save themselves. It's fucked at the moment. See, see, I don't know. See, I, I don't, I would 100% take uh the season being like just ended where is where we are now and Liverpool mm. be given the time. I would take it, but also I fucking know pricks. Like I just can't. I, I'm already like I can't deal with that banter that's going to come of that of just forever. Yeah, I can't. I can't deal. I, I don't want it, Rob. I don't want it. Right. So Ad- Adam anything... Rowe flipped it in a good way. To be fair, he said that Liverpool would be the first team ever to win a Premier League by only playing twenty nine games. They'd be the only asterisk champions of yeah, all time. Yeah. True. <laughs> True. Well flipped, bro. Another little star on your shirt. Freddie Quinn's eye just twitching one, when he yeah, says yeah. it. Uh, uh, uh. Like, the fact that they can't um, celebrate the title as well. Like you know the man. whole celebration. Well, that's the parade. This it's is like it, man. Happen. This is it. What's the fucking was... point of getting promoted? The point yeah. of getting promoted was that we would fucking Shane flood on the pitch at Ellen Road and carry Marcelo Bielsa around the stadium. It's that <laughs> moment. It's that moment yeah. that we missed. Like, there's still, like, you know, there's iconic images from throughout the club's history of, like, these great moments, and we were about to yeah. have one. And the feeling around the club was insane, man. We just, we had a bit of a wobble, and then we just turned it round and pl- started playing the best football I have ever seen Leeds United play. I'm not joking. We won five games in a row. Didn't concede a single fucking goal just battering 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 teams and i, like I was at a few of those and like, what, what i like how you try and make the championship sound exciting maybe yeah championship... no yeah for me, champ- with you I've, I've just heard robo holland go we won five games in a row and i was sitting there going that's cute that's like, cute have you ever fucking watched the championship for a start like the top 10 in the championship if you put them in the premier league you would and relegated the bottom 10 in the premier league you would not notice the difference you would not notice like the standard of football in the championship is insane no, no, insane I think, I now. The standard, the standard of competition is insane. The football is terrible. Shut your fucking mouth! Like, did you watch when Leeds played Arsenal, man? We ran oh, off Newcastle the fucking fan. pitch. I'm a Newcastle fan. We, yeah, so, what do you know about good football from me? <laughs> exactly. So, what I'm saying is, I've seen the championship. The competition. Now, you saw it a few years ago when you were in it, man. It's changed. Oh, it's mental. I fucking love already how the dynamic has changed so much from Rob before this one. We're all, well, we're all pals. We're all just gonna. And it's, <laughs> fuck you, Fumbi. No, this is exactly what I knew it would be. This is exactly what I knew it would be. Like, I don't know why I fucking like, no, brought you, no console on the same show because you're all like this. No one cares if Leeds get promoted or not. We're talking about the Premier League here. This is no, big no. Business. People do. They don't want it to happen. <laughs> I mean, but, it just can you imagine every new season like the Premier League said that new? You know who won the trophy the last season? That becomes the face of the little, you yeah. know, high sports. Can you imagine if Liverpool just had to win it behind closed doors? How do you generate that hype for the next season? Yeah, you show yeah. that moment forever of someone just you, you just scoring the winning goal. Like Bobby Firmino slots it in and you just hear, thwack, 
Yay. From th- a fucking 20 people. Like, yeah. it's, it's not and exactly going to be the same, is it? Like those, the like, trophy celebration by themselves. <laughs> you see, like, those videos from, like, the 70s. and so, Well, maybe a bit before that, where, like, cups were presented in dressing rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like Brian yeah. Clough shaking hands with some like some guy from a league and telling him to tuck his shirt in. <laughs> yeah, they've all got to like yeah, they've got to like put this trophy down, walk two meters away, and then let the next teammate come and pick it up wearing rubber gloves. Yeah, yeah it's fucked, man. Like, Don't kiss so- the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, man, like the the party in Liverpool would have been like just incredible, and I was so because especially as well as a fan who's not from Liverpool. I get like the most moments fans. I get are for, like finite. Nope. I'll ignore that. I'll I'll gloss over that. <laughs> uh, but like the moments I get that are like finite. Like I, I was lucky enough. I went to Madrid. I didn't go to the gate like the gate, but I went to Madrid uh, when we won the sixth Champions League last year and stuff like. And I was counting on this being another one of those moments. Mm. And obviously, there's more important stuff going on. And... No, but there's a huge loss. It's, these are like markers yeah. in your life and huge moments. And like for me personally, I've spent 16 fucking years waiting for this. And like I'm not joking when I say that. I, and I, and like, I um I also like for most of that time I had a season ticket and I was going home and away. So I was going like 40 odd games a season, getting up at 4 a.m. to get on a coach to go yeah. to Yeovil to watch us. It's your life at that point. That's your fucking. It was life everything. It was everything. Yeah. And I, like, what got me through those rainy, shitty, freezing days watching dog shit football under Neil fucking Warnock. Right, <laughs> getting through all that was the the idea that one day we would have this redemptive moment of our return to the Premier League. Honestly, it's just it's been such a huge thing for me, and, and now it's just going to be a box ticking exercise. And sure, I'm happier that we will be in the Premier League next season. I'm sure we will. There's no way you can resolve this without promoted leagues. I just don't think you can. And West Brom, to be fair, they're right with us. But I don't give a fuck about them. Do what you want. Uh, but like, it, it's it's missing that moment. And these are like great moments of our life. And these are great moments that like make life worth living. And I think it's fine to mourn those things. Like, obviously, you got to put it in perspective. It's not as sad as like people dying, but it's still sad, you know. Well, you can't promote Leeds unless you finish complete both leagues because I fucking love him. But he's still on that after <laughs> that not proper having, monologue. What a lovely <laughs> monologue! To... Nah, 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 nah. Can't nah, promote Leeds. Fuck off. <laughs> It's like you got three teams in the Premier League. West Ham, no, they can get relegated. That's why they're fighting tooth and nail to say, no, let's not complete the season. Yeah, we're done. Know, we're done. They know for a fact. We ain't. listen, yeah. You got players who've been doing fuck all for three months. Like yeah. and players at West Ham have been doing fuck all for a lot longer than that, mate. <laughs> right, right. They were shit then. Now they have to come back, and it's like, all right, guys, we have to stay up this time. Woo! Oh man, like, I hope it happens, man. And like, I, the thing is, I hope it happens because I know the lead squad are still in shit hot shape. Bielsa has not stopped the coaching; he's just doing it by video. It's insane, man. And like, our, our fucking, we signed a ridiculous player in January, John Kevin Augustine. We signed him from uh, Red Bull Leipzig. He used to play in the Champions League for them up front. Basically, we got him for on a loan to buy for twenty mil when we got promoted. Basically, we were going to buy him, you know, if we got promoted, because he was injured and fat, because he hasn't been playing for a while. But he's like a forty million pound striker if once he's fit. But now he's just doing crunches at home under Bielsa's like tutelage. Yes. So like, if we come back to the season, we've got a forty million pound striker up front instead of Patrick fucking Bamford. We're going to smash it. <laughs> Again, we don't know who these these people are. But... <laughs> You need to pay some attention to some proper football, mate. Proper fuck. You will right, be next okay, season. Rob, I was with when you for a point. Run over you. I was with you for a point. You can't be calling it proper football, Rob. <laughs> I'm just sitting there thinking, who are these people? <laughs> You'll find out next season, man. We'll fucking dog you next season. We're an unbelievable side. Oh, Champions League um, finals, like games. You yeah. start to realize how much football you've actually watched in your life, and like, wow, I miss. I, I remember these moments. Yeah, I I need to I need to watch games back in order to remember moments. My memory's so shit. So like watching like a, a game back, like yeah, just, they all blur into one man. The amount of hours of football I've watched, like I I have watched literally every game in every major tournament that I can remember in my entire life. That's so much football. It's crazy. <laughs> like, have you seen ITV are playing Euro '96 again? They like played a all few of it. Didn't they, didn't they do Italia '90 as well? Yeah, I don't know if they did all of it, but like they might have done. But yeah, they're showing every game of Euro '96, so I might like slap into some Czech Republic bangers, get some B-side games going. Oh, little Poborski. Oh, yeah. mate, Nedved. Poborski nicked a move to Man United off of that one. Yeah, man. Like that—that that one's always my favourite after a major tournament. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're decreased. Yeah, 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 that's it, man. You play three good games in a World Cup, you can have a fucking big ass yeah. move and then go look shit. Yerry Mina was the one at the last World Cup who did that, wasn't he? Mina was Sa- that was, Alexis was Sanchez Degris. as well had like a, a big one of them as well, didn't he? Yeah. And James Rodriguez, James Rodriguez, he had the biggest one. Yeah. yeah. El Ajjouf, maybe, man. El Ajjouf was like, that nah, Senegal fucking, team came out of yeah. nowhere. He was an absolute worldie for about a fortnight. Yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm not having that. Attitude just stank, I'm not having he's capable. Mate, he's a crazy guy. He played for Leeds for a bit. I yeah. bought, I had a fucking El Hadj Juf top when I was younger. <laughs> he's an absolute sewer rat. Yeah, that's yeah, Neil no, Warnock. Yeah. Yeah, Neil Warnock signed him for Leeds. Yeah. Him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did he yeah. play for Leeds? Yeah, he played for Leeds when we were like, yeah, like under Neil Warnock, right? And like. Oh, fuck. Played was a strong word. He kept like fucking off to Senegal for funerals every fucking fortnight, <laughs> right? And then uh, like one, my favourite moment of El Hadji during well, there's two, right? One, um, a, a young Leeds fan who was about eight dressed up as El Hadji for fancy dress, and he did what you thought he oh, might have done. God, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but El Hadji fucking loved it, right? He was like, he was like getting photos with this kid, and like that was all crazy. But then like uh, there was a game, my favorite game, we were playing Brighton, right? And we were, uh, what was the Scott, right? So we were uh, one down, right? And we're down to 10 men unfairly, right? The player sent off and like, he got rescinded afterwards, right? Yeah. We're down to 10 men. We get a penalty. LSG steps up, scores it, runs the length of the pitch to where the Brighton fans are at the other end, runs right up to them and his celebration goes, Rah! and then just waggles his dick at them and got a straight <laughs> yeah. red card. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we were level for exactly zero minutes. It just uh, they immediately <laughs> scored. We lost, but I I spent a good two hours at that game just dying laughing at that because like they briefly showed the replay on the big screen before they realised what he was doing. He didn't get it out. No, he didn't get it out. But those shorts were Macron, and therefore they're very thin. Oh. <laughs> Joey Barton, he mooned the um the audio, the, the crowd once, didn't he? Just showed his ass to the fans. Yeah, I don't think Mooning's that bad. That's just cheeky, isn't it? Like, <laughs> oh, come on now, Rob. Mooning's that. just a bit cheeky. Oh, I didn't even mean that. Fucking kill me. <laughs> it, Fuck it, me. It, I apologise for that accidental pun. I, I do apologise. This isn't a, oh, apologies for the pun. This is, no, a sincere, heartfelt apology. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. Wait, did you see that um, Newcastle fan got banned for life for getting his dick out at the match? Yeah, I did last see that, season. yeah. So, really? and, like, yeah, that. it's a goal celebration. He did a windmill, <laughs> and then like it was on telly. And like, um, what's your lad called? Who's got the the headband? Um, Maximan, Sam Maximan. He like because he's a legend on Twitter and that. He was like retweeting it, pissing himself, laughing. But then yeah, the guy got banned for life from footy for that. Those did racists from Chelsea, they didn't get banned from life. Like the guy know, got his dick know, out and entertained everyone. Do you know a funny thing that happened with Saint Maximan? He was trolling with Charleston of Everton. That he, I think he scored a goal against him. So Richardson puts a picture up of him and a Newcastle player who looks like Maximo, and him just kind of holding him off the ball. And it's actually Atsu. Oh and shit! Atsu goes, yeah, Atsu had a tough one that day, and everyone's just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> always right for everyone who isn't black. If you may saying a black guy looks like another black guy, check it's the right black guy. Oh, that's what I'd say. <laughs> just at, at first, when he see the picture, even I was like. When did that happen? It's only because I read the caption. I was like, oh shit, that's Atsu. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it? Wasn't they it had like, the same hair. Wasn't it like three weeks in a row or three Champions League games in a row? Uh, Shinji Kagawa was referred to as G Sung Park when he was at United. <laughs> and like his name that's came up on the bottom as G Sung Park. Jesus. It's unreal, yeah, that's that's it. That. Just fucking... Kagawa, he came with expectations, man. He let me down. He was amazing at Dortmund, man. He was unreal at Dortmund in that Klopp team. Um, but yeah, it just didn't didn't work, didn't suit the system at all. Like going from like Klopp's Dortmund to like Van Hals United is such a different way of playing and such a slower pace and like just all the it's, things it's, he was good at weren't used. It's more it's shit. Like being it's a more Ferrari shit, bro. And asked to tow a caravan. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That was totally it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I, still, I still rate him as a player, like despite him being scum. Like <laughs> I thought he was good. Like I basically, I like people who promised a lot, went to Man United, didn't deliver anything, then fucked off. I'm all right with them. <laughs> you know, you know, if you notice now that there's no sports or anything like that, you end up going on Google and just reading reports that you know are not true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what like transfer reports and stuff like oh that? Oh my god! You know the Newcastle takeover stuff is driving me insane, man. Oh, bad man. With Mbappe. 
Neymar. <laughs> I'm like, what? That's just people going, oh, they've got a load of money. Who could it be? Like, you know, Mbappe's not I after really- a project, is he? He's not He's not looking to, like, rebuild a club right now. He's going Real Madrid or nowhere. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I always love that with transfer rumours are one of my favourite things about football because it is literally just, like, some journalist going, uh, like, I think they've got a big wheel. I'll just fucking spin it like uh, Phil Jones to Trabzonspor. <laughs> that's that's what we'll go with today. Yeah, yeah, it's just too much. Man, like, I wonder what they're doing now. Like the people who normally write transfer rumours, what the fuck are they up to? Oh, they're still they're still doing it, and they're just getting bigger and more mad. It's, it's still news, isn't it? It's still clickbait. Make it yeah. fucking mad. Yeah. Yeah. Like sources, that's the best, the best word you find. Sources. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Sources, well, sources say, say. Never, never mention the source. Show you're working. Well, look, that's the problem. You do need to, as a journalist, you need to res- uh, respect the privacy of your sources, of course. But that does also mean that their source can be literally fucking anyone. <laughs> it's like that, like the sources close to the player. <laughs> Yeah, 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 close to the player. That could like, be anybody. Yeah, it like, could be someone geographically close to them. It's like just some <laughs> bloke down their street. <laughs> just phone, yeah, just phone some random guy he knows. Yeah, he said he's going to leave. I heard it in the pub at one point. Well, like, I, I haven't tuned into, like, Sky Sports News or anything for a little while because they were struggling week one. I can only imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine what they are doing for content right now. It's probably like Richard Keyes is probably just windmilling. <laughs> they're doing. They're doing what? Literally, all of us are doing. They're doing fucking Zoom quizzes. That's what they're doing. Yeah, it, it like is... Jamie Carrier against Ben Davies in a quiz. <laughs> Who the fuck cares about that? Who cares about that? Mate, it is insane. Like it's it's it. I, I had I, them playing FIFA. They had like a FIFA tournament thing, but the players are playing FIFA. Right, yeah. right. I can I can it's sort of understand that, I guess. But like, it has been interesting during this to watch how badly TV has coped. <laughs> like some of the fucking TV productions that are like. If I'm putting out better shit from my bedroom with no money, you want to sort your shit out the mash report. <laughs> <laughs> you know the fun, you know when you watch those um you know the Trevor Noah shows where they talk to camera and it's all you know designed on the audience, you know, laughter. Because mm. there's no audience, the monologues just seem so bland. Oh, it's brutal, man, isn't it? It's brutal yeah. just when the joke just like they, they they leave the pause and there's nothing <laughs> to fill it. <laughs> well, so have you what have you seen any of like the WWE? No, because they're, yeah, that... they're doing the same thing. They're just performing in an empty arena, but you've still got these wrestlers like putting their hands up to the crowd, and there's just <laughs> empty seats, and then them walking around going, "Yeah, yeah." They still do the whole entrance, still, so they'll come yeah. out and stand in the corner of the ring, just waving to no one. <laughs> fireworks going off and then they're like they'll, they'll stand in the ring like having these confrontations that's what i was gonna they say they still doing like the promos yeah yeah <laughs> what is the point of there is doing now it no the reason for them to be yeah. in the ring while they're having this conversation there isn't anyone watching them they could do it over fucking zoom they could be doing this <laughs> exactly yeah 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 basically it's not some kind of audience revolution because i didn't realize how much we need the audience <laughs> mate it's crazy they're gonna be demanding low ticket prices you need us <laughs> yeah it turns <laughs> We fucking do, man. Like yeah. I realise all my favourite things, right? I think what I like about them is big crowds of people. That's what I like. Like my, my favourite things are stand-up comedy, like uh, live music, gigs, raves, uh, football. That's... It's all because of crowds. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realise because people were talking about doing comedy through Zoom. I've mm. not really done. I've not seen or done one, but I can't imagine anything scarier than. Doing you can't this. imagine anything scarier than doing a comedy gig via Zoom. Man, you yeah. have led a sheltered existence. <laughs> <laughs> it would terrify me. It's it's not that bad, you know. Zoom's all right. I, I did one by Facebook Live that was a terrible, terrible mistake, right? <laughs> like, because you can't see anyone then. You are just talking into the ether, and that's horrible. But Zoom ones can be all right because you can see people, you can get a bit of reaction, and like you can you can do a bit with them. It's obviously not like doing stand up, but it's closer. I, I just tell stories when I do it, so it's not as like rhythm of stand up y. You know, so it's just a funny story rather than it being that. Yeah. I think that works a bit better. I don't know. That's what I was going to say as well, because I got asked to do the, the stand live stream. And mm. like I was thinking about, <laughs> I'd seen so many different people had like different kind of like approaches to it. Like some people tried to like maybe make it a bit more sketchy. Mm. Some people just did like the sets that they've been doing for like God knows however many years. Or so. Yeah, all the ones so we kinda... expected to have done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but I think that's the way to play it, Rob, as you said, of like just if it's like more of like a just like tell the story more a bit like laid back but it still is like 
it's not the same, obviously, but mm. it's you know as I think what the stand are doing in similar clubs. I don't know if anyone is doing that down in London or wherever, but um, or anywhere in England. But if they are, that sort of approach to it, I think is the best to go. Yeah, it's oh. anything that gets the audience involved. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. As soon as lockdown's over, man, I'm pitching every single script idea I've ever had to every TV company. I know you need the work. Yeah, man, there is going to be, like, they are going to be, well, I don't know, actually. Are they going to be commissioning loads of new stuff or just trying to get, rattle through episodes of all the old shit they haven't been making? Mate, they've got 400 episodes of EastEnders to make before they get to your pitch. <laughs> Netflix are the smartest. Netflix were bringing out shit they knew they were never going to release. They were like, you know what? Release all that shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like burying bad them. news, isn't yeah. it? You can stick out a shit film now. People will watch yeah. that cunt. Watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, Netflix are laughing right now. You know, they've got the Jordan documentary that's keeping them going. Oh, and it's so good as Ta- well. Tiger King was like right at the, the start of it all mm. and stuff. Disney Plus launched like the day after lockdown. Mate. It's fucking a- coincidence. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Oscars next year could be fucking amazing. Like, <laughs> the only things that have really been released are like student films <laughs> that, had to be, like, that had to be done for grading in like March. <laughs> You're gonna miss out on the Oscars. I mean, what are you gonna do? You can't. I mean, I don't know when cinemas are gonna go back to normal. But. Yeah, I think it's going to be a while. I, I think they're delaying a lot of releases, man. I don't think they're going to be like putting them out now. Just like ticket sales have been low. <laughs> I think a couple of stuff have just been battered on Amazon. I think. Yeah, I, 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 this is right. I don't know. The only example I know of that is the Trolls movie. I saw advertised <laughs> on there that they changed it to an online premiere. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be there. <laughs> Amazon are, are taking. They take a lot of content. Oh, mate, they take fucking anything. Like, yeah, I could film myself having a wank and Amazon would fucking put it up on Prime, man. It's unreal how bad some of the shit on there is. Like, honestly, some of the documentaries I, I have, like, clicked on going, oh, that might be interesting. And it's just like a dude talking into his fucking phone. <laughs> me and my, me and my uh, mate Ben generally have a game where we, like, type in, like, the maddest, stupidest shit into Amazon and there will be a film mm. on Amazon with, like, that title. And we just watch, like, we just lose three hours of our lives just watching <laughs> four decades like literally filming it on a fucking potato and we're just like t- die laughing it's incredible but there yeah. was one genuinely called like uh the, the yucky poo poo man genuinely <laughs> the yucky poo poo man yeah, yeah. yeah don't know why we typed it in but we did and it's fucking there wow Wow. Well, you swag it off, mate, but it's up for two Oscars next year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like I, I assume it's, it's, awards yeah. will be cancelled. Like I think that you know there, there's one positive to come from this. There'll be fewer awards. I, I you guys if... watched the parole hearing yesterday. The parole hearing. Yeah. For who? For his speech. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were gonna get parole yesterday, guys. I was really excited. Mate, we've got weekend release. <laughs> we've got like day release, haven't we? Basically, like we've got some, yeah. we've got a few more privileges. Like, are you, are you, I'm, I'm gonna, mate. I'll be honest with you. I'm taking the fuck advantage of this because I, I think I've already had Corona. So I'm right. I'll keep, you know, I'll wash my hands. I'll wear a mask. But I am meeting a lot of mates individually to walk around some parks next week. Like, definitely. Like, I am fucking. I love my girlfriend. She's great. I need to talk to <laughs> other humans. All right. <laughs> Hey, Rob, that's not like some pedophile shit. I'm going to meet with some guys to walk around parks. Like, Honestly, Whoa. that's why I'm here. I didn't know how old she was, right? You're going to see me getting filmed outside oh, a little. I would fucking, I would, honest to God, my life would just be fucking made if I saw Rob Mulholland in a pedo hunter video. That would be fucking <laughs> incredible. Just no, a, honestly, a little fucking it... Tesco bag on, no fucking idea of her age. <laughs> oh. You look the type as well. No, that's not. That's no, no, I think it's fair. Like... <laughs> I wonder how they're going to select Live at the Apollo this year. I wonder how that's going to go. Oh, they ain't, man. It's going to be like, it'll just what, what they'll do is they'll get the same fucking eight comedians who've always done it to film something from their house and it'll be shit. All right. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Yeah, man. Like, sh- film your best 10. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't think, I don't think that series is happening this year. I think they'll show a repeat. Stick the Tom Stain meat van on again. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, again. Yeah. That's going to be better than fucking, you know, going to like Nish Kumar's house for 10 minutes, isn't it? Like, <laughs> no, off- no offense to Nish in particular, but you know, like, you know, let's just watch someone actually do it. 
That's actually funny. Oh, that's thanks, man. Thanks for saying it's actually funny. <laughs> Unlike everything fucking else I've said. That was like, for me, just thought that was the first genuinely funny moment that's happened on this no, podcast. No, not even, not even on this. I think, like, he's never said that since I've known him. Like, me and Fumbi have been on said, trips. Like, <laughs> imagine the BBC going to Nishkumar's house, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're not front door opening. Hi, guys. <laughs> Welcome to my lockdown. Just imagine it. That's why it was funny. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> I know like you're not funny, Rob. I know you're funny. Thank you, man. Thank you. That's literally oh, all I have. Are you guys writing? <laughs> are you guys writing? Because I haven't written a joke in nah. three months. No, not one thing. Not even had a thought, really. <laughs> People are like to me, you should be writing so much now. Like to perform to who? About what? Yeah. And about what? Like everyone's going to have the same five minutes. I like. I started when I was doing online gigs, right? I started doing a bit about going to Tesco a couple of times because, like, you know, like there's a lot about it. You know, it's all changed. But then I was like, every cunt on earth is yeah. doing this because it's the one trip out everyone's having. You know, so like everyone's going to be doing that sort of shit. So I'm not. No, basically, I'm resting because I, I I know as soon as I start again, my brain's going to go bam when it's stimulated with the outside world again. So I'm not worrying about it, man. Like, I'll come up with shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, like for now, nah, like, I'm not going to write like, I just have nothing to write. And I don't write like that. I go talk to people. Like, I have an idea and then I go talk to people. And like, you know, Deegan doesn't write jokes anyway, do you, mate? Honestly, that that last two minutes felt like you were doing a motivational speak. <laughs> 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 Felt like I'd paid a fiver to listen to your fucking bullshit wisdom. Yeah, that was the second monologue of the podcast. <laughs> Mate, I, I, go, I go on them. I get high. I'm in my own house. I start. I get on my fucking little podium and I just go. <laughs> i tell you one thing. That first gig back, I cannot die. I bet you can. I will, I will take the booze and be like, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Man, like, I, honestly, though, like, I do really hope I see at least one of my mates die on their ass their first gig. <laughs> nothing oh, better. Mate, I would nothing laugh better forever. than that. Nothing better than that. That would be unreal. Yeah. If after, like, a full Don't year, you? they're so excited to get back on stage and the audience just <laughs> hate them, despite them not seeing any live entertainment for a year. There is, there is going to be, be someone. House. You are going to see someone who hopelessly misjudges the corona situation does the five and just gets the mate people died yeah my nan died <laughs> just like you know there's just gonna be a big scouse woman no matter where it is in the country <laughs> my fucking nan died yeah fucking love my nan they're like, gonna come on a stage like did you actually see the bodies yeah <laughs> <laughs> this thing on <laughs> That, that's been my fucking, like, that's been a thing at the moment. People have been like, oh, well, I don't know anyone who's had it. No one's been <laughs> fucking tested. No one knows if anyone's had it. Like, what are you on oh about? And like, why would you? Like, you're not a fucking How? doctor. Do you know, this, the funny thing is this. I forgot what we were talking about before Corona. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So what I what, like what now, was in the news? Yes, yeah, so I feel like now it's like, when we go back, it's like, what, what do we talk about? How do you do this again? How does this work? Ah, it's fine, man. I'll just write a load of jokes about cum again. Like, that's... <laughs> it's not. It's not really like I'm not fishing in a deep well, mate, for my comedy. It's just like dicks and shagging and drugs. <laughs> like, you know, like, I, I think I'll pick the... it back up. <laughs> I can't wait for the Edinburgh posters next year. There has oh, to be a show called Lockdown, right? There's going to be oh, a show. Loads, oh, loads, just, oh, loads it'll of them be spoofing all of these posters that have just come out. Like, there's already loads of spoofs of that government poster from yesterday. Someone's poster is yeah. going to be that. Loads of people. Loving the time of coronavirus. 19 shows called that. <laughs> That's going to be crazy. Mm. I, think for a, I think for a while, everything will just be about it. Like, everyone will be, like, writing fucking sitcoms that all start in lockdown and shit. Like, oh, I think it'll be... Name. I think it's going to be shit. I think Don't it's going start to be really with a bottle shit. episode. Even the music, the music we're going to be listening to, people are going to be using Corona as a reference. And oh, mate, bars low, are going to be low, so low. bad. In like rap bars are going to be unreal. Just oh on, get a shit locked down like the Rona. <laughs> Everyone's going to go, if you're in a rap battle, you don't even have to make sense for the first line. You just yeah. have to get the, I'll smoke you like COVID-19. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, I don't know why I'm like this. I'll kill your nan. Coronavirus. <laughs> Bro, that was actually sick. That yeah, was actually sick. I'm actually, that was actually sick. Yeah, oh, thanks. I'm actually quite good at off, rapping, mate. weirdly. Like, <laughs> I genuinely, I, I, I occasionally rap battle. 
I'm a rapper. Really? I feel you. I feel you on that one. That's it's just going to happen. Yeah, Have you ever done like any of the um? What are they called? Don't flop, you mean? Don't flop, yeah. yeah, yeah that's, that I knew that. I knew that would be the one. That's what everyone knows. I battled. Uh, I battled Shuffle T. Uh, it's on YouTube. From Fuck Shuffle T. Come Marla, on, mate. And I fucking. I know what I'm beat, doing after this. I fucking beat him Dude. as well. Shuffle T is from Shuffle T and Marlow. They're like the t- two on two tag team rap battle champions, right? They're like uh, two posh no, boys, they're, basically. They're really they're great, so really funny great. and so, so good. funny. So funny. But like, yeah, really I battled smart him. as well, yeah. I battled him in uh, Liverpool at Hot Water and I fucking smoked him. Uh, yes. <laughs> like, no, it was, it was, it, like, looking back on the video, it was definitely debatable. But on the night, I got the, I got the decision. So, it was a uh, split decision. I got the decision, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the decision. Obviously, the crowd were behind the comedian they didn't think could rap. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, like, yeah, watch that on YouTube, man. It's fun. I did one for the BBC and it was dog shit, you know? Like, they put it on iPlayer. Yeah, well, because the BBC have taken something that's inherently not their style of shit and tried to fucking whack a fucking BBC logo on the bottom of it. Mate, it's not it going to work. It was unreal. Though. We, we were in a meeting uh, with, like, uh, some BBC people and they said that we weren't allowed to do anything that was insult- personally insulting or offensive. It's like, have you seen a rap battle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing you have to do. That's literally yeah, yeah. it. That's I can't like, yeah, be offensive like... or insulting. What am I meant to say? Like, I was up against Leo Curse. How am I meant to say nice things about that? Oh, it, it's impossible, that. Impossible. That is impossible. Impossible. I don't, want to hear, I don't want to hear Leo Curse say nice things. How about that? Mate, you def- <laughs> I'll tell you what, you don't want to hear him fucking rap. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it was bad. Bad, right? Like the BBC basically they edited it so badly you can't even tell what's really going on in the video. They ruined it. Like they they uh, they edited it so um there's punchlines without setups, like um callbacks without the original setup, all that sort of stuff. They they made my two round battle into three rounds and just fucked it basically. But like they did leave in the bit at the end where there was a cheer off and uh, it was uh, the, the, they asked uh, give me a cheer if you think Leo Curse won and the only noise in the entire room is me laughing. <laughs> 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 like I got, I, I went all out on that one as well. I got a T-shirt printed of Leo's dick. Someone sent me a picture of his dick, so I put it on a T-shirt <laughs> and wore it. That doesn't sound very, very BBC. No, well, they, they approved that. Their only issue with that was that, that I owned the rights to the Im- image and the T-shirt. I was like, yeah, I didn't buy this in Topshop. Like I made if I this. Leo, I would say he doesn't have the right to have my dick on his T-shirt. Mate, he got it out in public. Uh, it was, you know, oh, it, it was at, it was at one of those yeah. naked gigs. So like, he was on oh, stage. Right. So like, it wasn't like you know, it wasn't like a full on like <clears throat> dick pic. Sorry, I was at one of those naked gigs. I'm, I've not had one in my diary. <laughs> oh no, I've During never the done French, one. Man. But... During the French, they happen. Yeah, like Spank does. Um, they have a naked person. Like following the naked person at Spank. Have you ever done that? One a.m. Little basement, Edinburgh. You got to follow someone getting their tits out. Oh good, I'll just follow this vagina, shall I? Yeah, yeah. That... I've always, on, I'm always on before. Spank was a gig that after two nights of your show, Spank was welcome. <laughs> you know what I mean? At least you got energy. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man. Like you need to do your show different, man. I, my show had fucking energy. <laughs> but it depends where you are at Edinburgh, man. After like four nights of my show, Spank was welcome. It was a welcome twenty minutes distraction. I feel like a comic again. <laughs> Where were you doing? Where where did you do, man? What venue did you do? Um, old press room in the Pleasant's Courtyard. There you go. You went to Pleasant's Courtyard. You see, like oh, that. You go there for career. You don't go there for enjoyment. Like gigs Pleasant's in the Pleasant's are dog shit. Like they're not fun. They're full of posh old boring cunts who've all spent fifteen quid a ticket to judge you. Like free shows are fun. That's where the juice is at Edinburgh. Mm, I mean, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, wild. yeah. I'm not saying all of them, man. Like, I've been in plenty that have made me want to fucking kill myself. Like one time, I was, I did a show when he, he, is it Hibernian had played one local team. Hibernian, you mean? Hibs. Yeah, Hibs. Yeah, Hibs. Hibs. It was a local derby and <laughs> against Hearts, I assume. <laughs> right, and they were so drunk and just excited, and I'm thinking, who watches Hibs play? Like, you know, uh, Catholic. To, to be fair, for me, we all think that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, people, you know, you have to respect fans like that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, no, nah, like, I'm genuinely, I'm, I'm not even going to try and defend Scottish football here. Even as the Scottish person drafted in, it's it's honestly the biggest pile of white. If you think the championship shit, I watched some Scottish football. Mate, it is poor shit. Mate, Le- Leeds would win the Scottish Premier League by, like, November. It's like, it's, yeah, it's oh. the, the standard you know is so I'm different. Sorry. 
Leeds are not that good. Okay? Yes, we are. I honestly think Leeds fucking under 15s could do a job in the, in the fucking Definitely Scottish could. Definitely could. Definitely could. Didn't Man. the Scottish Premier League top scorer a couple of years ago leave the Scottish Premier League and sign for Salford, who were non-league? Yes, that did happen. Then, yeah, from Aberdeen. What was his name? Was it Summit Rooney? Adam Adam, Adam Rooney. Rooney. Is it? I think I oh, think yeah. this is the guy. Like we might be slandering Adam Rooney, but I think it's Adam <laughs> Rooney. No, that does ring a bell. To be yeah. fair, uh, yeah, why he, did he do that? Because um, they're owned by like uh, the, the like those Man U players from '94, like Scholes and Butt and Neville, yeah, basically. Neville, so yeah, they're, yeah. they're dead rich, Salford City. They're like they're they're like basically diet scum. Like they are. <laughs> Like they're, they're a horrible little club, and I was delighted when we drew them in the cup and went and beat them. Because like Sky were trying to make this like into this like, oh, the old rivalry returns. It's like, who the fuck are these cunts? We don't give a <laughs> fuck about this non-league bollocks. You can't make this into a fucking rivalry. <laughs> the, the old rivalry. What was the score? What was the score, Rob? What was the score? It was it was two nil, I think. Oh, that's not enough. No, that, I won, but Rob, like, mate, we played enough. the kids. We played the kids. We played the kids. Uh, Eddie Umketia <laughs> got uh, like scored a last minute goal in that actually. Before he went back to Arsenal. Another name I do not know. Well, he was scoring goals for Arsenal before the season ended. Like, he was playing up front for them. All right. You should know him. That's just you being shit. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Eddie Nketiah. Ian Wright's protégé. Like, um, yeah, he was at Leeds for the first half of the season. Didn't play all the time because he got, like, injured. And Bielsa takes a while reintegrating players. He's got a weird system. And basically went back to Arsenal and f- like in the in January. Um, like, really good English player. Never quite fit the system at Leeds. But I think he'll, it, like, he looked, like, really sharp. Really good player. He'll be a proper, decent centre forward. Maybe, like, points- proper, like, England potential. How many points clear are you at the um, top of the championship? Oh, we're one point clear of West Brom. But then it's, like, seven points, I think, down to... Below us, like um, just, games another two, twenty-five or something like that. Nah, nah, ele- eleven games left. Like the only, the only slight wrinkle was we were playing uh, Fulham, who were in third at home. Uh, like that, that was the only game that was anywhere near us. We played everyone else in the top six and beat them all. Like sometimes those are the most difficult games, though, man. Like if you hugely right now for Leeds, though, it's always like we always we always fuck up against like last season. Like the 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 season turned when we played Wigan at home and we were one nil up and cruising, and then like yeah, yeah. lost two one. Like that's when the season went, and like Wigan nearly went down. Like you know, it's 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 against shit teams we fuck up. Yeah, like yeah, and fuck it. I honestly, I have not been scared as a Liverpool fan turned up at Old Trafford in like a good few years now. Man United don't really scare me. City don't even really scare me. Chelsea don't scare me. Arsenal don't scare me. But fuck you, yeah, we lose three 0 away to Watford. That's just like the way Mate, it that, is. That my head fell off when I saw that result. It just came up on my phone. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was it was mad. It was uh, yeah. I was watching it going, well, this actually need, can't though. be happening. I think it's what you needed, Gareth. Totally, I actually agree with you again. Uh, that is what we needed because we were just getting so fuck because we were too fucking good. We were just winning. <laughs> We're just winning all the time. We yeah. actually did need a bit of the fucking fire again. Yeah. 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 What do you reckon you exactly needed at Berry, Dagan? <laughs> Say that again, pal. What, what do you reckon you needed at Berry? What do you reckon it was? What did we need at Berry to survive? <laughs> About 13 and a half million quid. <laughs> Which, when you consider our average attendance is 2,000. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a deep reach for all of you, isn't it? And you're all from Berry as well. Like, it's not a salubrious area, is it? Well, it's one of those, it's like all of it's like, so if you look at like Manchester, so it's all those, all those satellite towns. So like Wigan, Bolton, Rochdale, Oldham, Stockport, like they're all full of Man United fans. Man United is, is only half an hour on, on the tram. Yeah. So they're, all, and, they're, the, and the scum all fucking everywhere. <laughs> exactly. It's city, city are the same as well. There's loads of city fans in, in Bury. All the clubs in that area are mm. struggling and they'll all go out of existence. And when they do, then it'll be my time to fucking laugh at them. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening with Berry now? Is, is your club's out? No, it still it still exists because we haven't we haven't been wound up. That's why that's why it's different. It's not like Chester or um, uh, Hartlepool or uh, not Hartlepool, Darlington, where they've. Oh no, I think Scarborough. Hartlepool. Got, yeah, Scarborough, where they've the club has been wound up and they've had to form another club. Like Bury FC still exists. You've just been expelled from the league, haven't you? Yeah, it's just been expelled from the league and it's in a colossal amount of debt. Yeah, but the pitch is still it. being kept nice, isn't it, by like volunteers and stuff. Like the stadium's still in good nick. Yeah, yeah, the grounds, the groundsman still turns up every day. And yeah. it's that's awesome. fucking, that's excellent. I love shit like that. Yeah, that's man. Proper, it's a, that's that's a proper league. community for me, that. I properly love that. That's what football's supposed to be, man. Obviously, 100%. Change the game. 
Love but that. When, it's a, Love when it. I went to Sunderland until I die, I, that's when I understood how much a football team means to a frigging community, man. Yeah, they, man. They literally yeah. feed that From nation. a Newcastle fan, we're hearing this. Yeah, I was actually, yeah, I was just going to say no, that. Was, I never realised what football meant until I looked at Sunderland fans. Like, that's a <laughs> clip I'm cutting out of this, man. Hey, listen, man. When you get relegated to the championship, that's pretty bad. But when you start a double, <laughs> yeah. right? Who are you talking to? Who are you telling this to? I'm a Leeds United fan. I fucking know. We did it. Then we got docked 15 points. I was fucking there. When you start a documentary that's supposed to celebrate your return and you get relegated again, that's cool. Yeah, Rob man. is definitely the most fucking animated stoner I've ever met in my life. <laughs> Mate, why do you think I smoke so much weed? Like, I need this to bring me down to this level. <laughs> wow. Like, wow. This is me down and Medicated. Up. This is you, yeah, medicated. Yes, man. Yeah. Right. That puts it into context, though. What a tragedy they were relegated to League One. The tragedy at Bury is we got promoted to League One and never got to compete. <laughs> Never got to live that League One dream. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been 42 cup finals. Oh, man. I like to say, I, I genuinely love, like, I'm I'm getting near a point. I'm not there yet. We've still got the Bielsa dream that's keeping my romantic love for football alive. But, like, there will come a point with me where I get so sick of, like, corporate modern football that I just fuck off to non-league. Because, like me, like, me and Danny went to watch some shit football like when we had oh, a gig mate, together. That was dreadful. Mate, well, but I loved it. It's great. You go watch shit football. Who did we watch? We watched... Um, we fucking... watched this, was it Scottish Premier League, was it? No, no. Only slightly better. It was... Um, it was... Morecambe versus Carlisle, which was the worst is... game in the football league that weekend because Carlisle yeah, were bottom. Two lowest teams. Yeah, Carlisle were bottom and Morecambe were twenty first. <laughs> so we went to watch them play each other, and there was a reason they were in those positions. Carlisle fans are fucking terrified. I remember because my dad's were a they? Swansea fan. I think Carlisle fans were terrified. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, fucking why I. All right, uh, my, I, I didn't my spot any hard nuts that day. That looks a bit tin pot to me, but you know, I'm I'm used to like big crowds. Yeah, yeah you're a roughhead, mate. You're fucking straight, straight you're off the streets, crew, Rob. Mate. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're used to the big crowds, Rob. Not when it's a small crowd and you can see the whites in their eyes. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. There was only no, whites remember... in their fan base. I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was saying something then. Sorry, no, it was me. I was gonna tell. I was gonna try. I was gonna tell a story of uh, like because my dad's a Swansea fan, and when I was like proper young, he where took me. Where the fuck are your family from? What the fuck? How have how have you ended up a Liverpool fan with a Swansea fan dad and that accent? What the fuck? Did you just meet in the middle, draw a line between Scotland and yeah, Swansea, no, it's, it's, and in the middle confusing. point is Liverpool? It's confusing. Uh, no, uh, I can't even like fully like my dad's uh, has, has always been a Swansea fan. But uh, no, I think I fuck it. I'm a bit ashamed to say this now, Rob. I know what's about so to you've, come. You've, here. you've touched. No, I don't think you do because it's really quite embarrassing. Uh, it was. It was. It was Michael Owen that was my that turned my head towards Liverpool the first. The first time. Right. This is worse than Fumby with Sunderland. We've now got a Scott guy. You know what? It was England's bright Mate, young. I'm home. not even joking. I'm not even joking. It was. It was a his goal for England against Argentina in the net eight Euros. Oh. It was that goal. Uh, yep. I know, yeah, that is worse than the Fumby Sunderland thing, isn't it? Not really, that was a good goal. That was a, oh, man, unbelievable. I, just put out, I don't like Sunderland, I just understood. <laughs> <laughs> now, we heard what we heard, Fumby. We heard what we heard. <laughs> Fumby has now declared Rob's already Sunderland clipped fan. it up. Rob has oh, already mate. clipped it up. Fucking Amazing what you can do with that in. I'm going to to call you to remove that line, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it was that goal, and then I was like five or six for the first time I ever went to Anfield, and that's that atmosphere was a game changer as soon as I yeah. seen it. I was like yeah, that's fair. Like, if you go in that stadium, I imagine it. But, like, it's one of the good ones. Like, uh, like Fumbi, do you support Nigeria or England in football? Like, if they play each other? Nigeria all the time. Fair enough, man. Yeah. 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 I, would al- I would also support Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Michael Owen was playing, in which case, <laughs> you'd be down there with your shirt on. <laughs> I'm, I've got both tops. I'm England till I die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it was. I mean, I was heartbroken at the time, but then that you season we won the league. fucking Champions League. It was the best night of my life. So, oh, fucking nice. Michael, Michael, who? Um, yeah, we got Jubilee of Cisse that season. Oh yeah, Fuck, love Cisse. Mate, like when uh, when you won the Champions League that night in Istanbul, like, I was fucking off my bollocks on mushrooms, and uh, someone oh, had to confirm to me to the next it. day that that had happened. <laughs> I was like, just checking because that seemed 
there's here's a funny uh, funny little thing uh, to show the massive age difference between us. So you that night, the next day, someone had to confirm it to you because you were off your balls on mushrooms. The next day, I went to school, primary school, I think. <laughs> Wait, you had to have it confirmed to you. I'll, I'll bet all the money in my pocket someone had to have the same chat with Jimmy Traore. <laughs> <laughs> no, mate, you got a winner's medal. Yeah, you're right. no, that's there's real, players, Jimmy. There's some players in the, in this world that will look back at their trophy cabin and be like, I didn't deserve this. But I'm Leeds, gonna... Leeds legend, Harry Kuehl, he got one. Yeah. That fucking horrible little Aussie rat cunt. Fuck Come me. on now. He was fucking world class for you. He, he, was a, he was a very, very good footballer, but a despicable, awful human being who I would Whoa, love Rob. to watch burn. Rob, this is Whoa. genuinely shocking to me, this. It's he shocking to you. He moved to Galatasaray, the cunt. He has got to make a living, hasn't he? Exactly. He can make a... <laughs> Oh, and that's the only yes, football club daddy. on earth that would have signed Harry Kuehl. Yes, daddy. He had to yes, choose daddy. that one. Oh, he's got to make a living. Great argument. Michael Owen said he, at Newcastle was the worst time of his life. Yeah. He was paying the most money he's ever yeah. seen in football. Now, there's scum. The Owen, oh, there's proper scum for you. I don't know what Harry Kuehl's done to deserve. He moved Such to Galatasaray. What, the, what more do you need? Everybody left your club. It was the right no, thing no. to do. You can leave. That's fine. Go somewhere else. Don't go to the club where two of our fans got murdered in a game that you played in. Like, he was in that team when Leeds fans were murdered at Galatasaray. Then he joined them. But Fuck now, you. like, at, at this venture in the podcast, I would like to say I was actually not aware of those events. Right. Rob, okay. you, have, you have your opinion, lad. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. All right, I remember, All that right period. I remember that period. I remember I that don't. period. Fuck me, that's horrific. Yeah, it's you horrific, man. Night. So, like, Did fuck you... that guy. Fuck yeah, that no, guy. Totally, no, totally fuck that guy. Did you win that night? Uh, I can't. I actually cannot remember. You know, um, I'm fucking awful. Like, I don't think we. I don't think we did there, but I think we won the tie. Can't remember, man. Like, I just remember the events around it. It was when was we were like in like two old draw. Might well have been, man. That's like, true. I'm awful that's for true. like that's individual great, results of stuff, especially if there's like, been a big incident. I'm like, I just remember that. My brain doesn't work, so I like. I think it was like like Leeds were two one down and they mm. scored a controversial equaliser and that's what kicked everything off. Yeah, like it was it was it was just it was bad vibes all around, man. It was like it wasn't good going in. Like it was it was it's a it's a hell of a fucking thing there. Like like you know their whole that thing does... is welcome to hell. Someone in Leeds end had taken a banner that said "Hello hell, we are Leeds." <laughs> Great, <laughs> I absolutely fucking love that. All right, Rob, you've got you've got a gun with one bullet in. Yeah. And you've got Harry Kuehl yeah. to your left. Okay. And Alan Smith to your right. Right. Kuehl, instantly. Not even a thought. You'd let Smith get away with what he did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what, all right. No, no, Alan Smith, about, right. I will talk about, to you about the Alan about Smith Ju incident. What about Jubri, the fucking rat? Yeah, Jubri's a rat. Um, but, like, nah, like, he's Kuehl all you the way. You've got some problematic players, bro. Oh, mate, we have we have this season. This season, our goalkeeper, like, got convicted of uh, dropping an N-bomb, abusing another player. Remember that? And, like, it's unreal, man. Like, and uh, Boya and Alan Smith, they go into that fight. Yeah, man. No, no, Woodgate. it wasn't, it was, it wasn't was Alan it. Smith. That it was, was Jonathan Woodgate and Lee Boya was that. Okay, yeah. Woodgate and Lee Boya, okay. Yeah. Both of them came to Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Woodgate, another fucking he played for was he the mental player that went to Madrid as well? He went, he, went, he went to Madrid, but like the thing it's is it wasn't game. mental. He was genuinely that good at that time, but then he could not handle the move. Yeah, no, sorry. Was it uh Thomas Thomas Gravison? He went to Madrid as well, wasn't it? Mm, that was did, yeah. fucking that's mental. Legend. Yeah. Thomas well, like, Jonathan Woodgate. Any, no, anyone who plays for Everton cannot transfer to Real Madrid. <laughs> That right, can't that's happen. Fan, that's because you're a Liverpool fan, Gareth. No, 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 it's not. That's fucking Oh, madness. there's no bias involved here. I, you didn't that... like, I liked Gravison. I liked Gravison. Oh, him. come on. Yeah, but did you He's Real Madrid like him? Yeah, come exactly. On. Exactly. But I don't know what happened there. I really don't. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> no, again, no one fucking does. Real Madrid do have, like, they do have form for just someone having a breakdown and making a mental... I think, like, didn't Adebayor go on loan? Yeah. He did yeah. well there. He did really well there. Like he scored a lot of goals. Yeah, like but like yeah, he's but he, he's not. He's like like Adebayor is one thing you say about him. He is mentally tough. He don't give a fuck. Like <laughs> you know, like that that guy's yeah, not Diara. intimidated by Diara. shit. That played for Portsmouth, Arsenal. They had him too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 They take so many, just so many yeah. players. They had Schneider, Van der Vaart. They had that one point. Yeah. yeah, but Van der Vaart was <laughs> sick, man. But they just got him too late. They just got Schneider yeah. and Van der Vaart too late. 
he just he just he didn't care about football. He was like, yeah, I'm just I'll go back to Hamburg. <laughs> and he, 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 had, he had a beautiful like uh yeah, like gentle wife. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he had a beautiful and he had a beautiful time then when he went went back there. I think yeah. he had an extended yeah. career. He was yeah. a fucking great player, man. Wand yeah. of a left foot. It's only ever the left foot you say is a wand, isn't it? No one no one ever has a wand of a right. There you go. The right expected, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Thoughts with the roll. Yeah. So it was left as described as a wand, <laughs> did it? I'm thinking of, of taking up a career in humorism. Something deep. You know, it's always a left foot they call a wand. <laughs> that was so profound, Rob. Appreciate Thanks, that. man. Thanks. You I've know heard... the funny thing? When someone does hit a left foot bangle, you just it just looks sexier than a right one, right? I agree. Yeah, I, I, I like agree. A, a left foot, left foot. Like a proper ping. Woof. Yeah. Even just like a cross with the left foot. Mate, oh. do, do you guys, do you guys uh, were you guys ever a fan of Andy Reid? Uh, a bit of a Nottingham Forest legend. One of my favourite players of all uh, time. Yeah, Andy Reid, he was fat as fuck. Fat as fuck. Know. Way fat, right? Like, properly, like, at the point where you're like, you know, you don't get footballers this fat anymore. Like, you know, like, Tubby, lad. But his left foot was unreal. He did was... Uh, no, yes, he think... did. Yeah, he did. He, he went did, to Tottenham. Yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah. yeah, he played for Stoke he for a bit, amazing. didn't he? Even Tottenham fans were like, he's good, he's just so fucking fat. Oh, man, that's it. He's like a talent like you would not believe. I, I, yeah. I've seen him play live like uh, 10 times, maybe. And every time I was excited. Honestly, like my favourite player to fucking watch because like wander around at th like three miles an hour and then just this arced 40 yard curved ball just onto someone's fucking eyelash, you know? <laughs> he, looked like, he looked like the bloke on the Minecraft logo. <laughs> he was just like a, like a little fucking block. <laughs> I needed I like needed that. that level of beautiful description <laughs> to picture this guy. I needed that. That is like, exactly what he's like. You couldn't knock him off the fucking ball as well because like, like Tom he... Huddleston. Tom Huddleston was like that. You know. Mate, you just... I I thought Huddleston was the future of English football for ages. Honestly. Like just amazing feet. Wow. Yeah. But like, he was one of those players who got a reputation for having really good long shots, but just because he takes loads. Like Bradley Johnson's another one of them. Like, there's players who just smash loads of shots. Who everyone's like, "Oh, he's good." Nope, just frequent. Eventually, one goes in. Yeah. Do you know? I'll tell you what. What blew Max on was slagging off these players' physiques. But so when I when I when I left college that summer, I got a job at a, at a service station in Bury, and it's where the Man United team bus used to meet for away games. So would see the United players walking around. And I remember serving Phil Neville in WH Smith. And Phil Neville is built like a fucking heavyweight boxer. <laughs> I bet, Honestly, man. Like, his neck really? is like my thigh. Yeah. Because like, Phil, Phil Neville didn't get there through talent. He got there through graft. <laughs> like... And yeah, brother. And big brother. <laughs> you know, you would see him, like, out on the pitch with the other players and you he would wouldn't go, stand out he yeah stand you would go that is an average size man yeah, I remember 100%. giving him his change and thinking how fucking big is Yap Stam yeah man our yeah. oh, Premier League footballers are supermen like when I, when, I, when I was in a when I was in a stadium uh, like, I was like front row for Leeds versus City in the cup once and I was watching Yaya Torre came over to collect a ball and like the size of that man the size you think David Silver's like a totally like you think he's a dwarf, but like when he gets close, he's a normal sized bloke. Just Yaya Torre is, he's like a fucking wardrobe. It's insane. Like the, the one thighs player, on him are bigger than my chest. The one player that I've had that, but this isn't gonna this isn't gonna surprise anybody. The one player I've had that with, as I said, my dad's a Swansea fan. We were at the Olympic Stadium again, like a good few years ago now. But fucking uh, Akin Fenwa was playing for Swansea at the time. Yeah, now that's a that's a fucking boy. Yeah, he's built like a deadlifter though, isn't he? Yeah, it's 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 honestly obscene. He he couldn't run. No, but why would you need to when he's just <laughs> standing there and no <laughs> one's moving him? Yeah, I went yeah. to college with his cousin, so I know him, I, I know him. I really? Know his yeah, I know his brothers. Amazing, and man. They're all, they're all massive. <laughs> yeah. That's an incredible little. I'm really glad I brought that up now, just because I know that. Houses, all of them. Oh, I bet, man. There's there's genetics involved in there. Like, look, obviously that guy's eating a lot and working out a lot, but like, I couldn't get that big. I couldn't be that strong. Yeah. Like, no way. Like, you know, if I, if I went on the most insane rip of all time in the gym, you can have as many montages as you want. That think, guy's yeah, pushing me over in a second. I think the closest <laughs> to that is um, Adama Traore for Wolves. Yeah, yeah. man. But like, like, he's yeah. he's got the skill as well, and he he can hey, he can accelerate. And he's quick. He's fucking fast as fuck. And once fuck. he's moving, you don't want to when get in front first, of that guy. No. When he first came, was like, 
he can't pass the ball. He just run like a headless chicken. Now he's kind of figured that out. I hate I hate when he's playing against us because he's terrifying. Such a he's, terrifying. Yeah, he is terrified. He's yeah. one of those players that when he's like running, you can like just like imagine what it would be like hearing him coming behind you. Yeah. You'd just be shitting. Or imagine it. if you're like <gasps> you're a fullback <gasps> and you've got to like stand there and like yeah. front up to him as he's coming at you at full pace. <laughs> Fuck imagine that. the rookie fullback that day. You know when you had the fullback who. It's not the it's not the main one. It's the one that's just coming for his first game. You got yeah. that player running at you. You're gonna you're gonna give a penalty. No chance. You're done. Yeah. yeah. A penalty. Yeah. His you know? shoulders are so wide as well. You're like in comparison, he's a chowd, to isn't he? He's like a hand glider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's short, so he's really stocky. Yeah, and he's man. Got, and his strength, he uses he runs with strength. You know, some people, some players are pacey, but they don't really run with strength. Mm, there's he momentum behind him. Strength. Yeah, it's like talk, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, but like me and Deegan were saying that actually, when we were at that really shit match, all of those guys that we were laughing at, like being a bit shit, were so much fitter and stronger and better than we would ever be. Like if we went down the park to play with them lads, they would make us look like well, cunts. I feel like, I feel like in football now in the Premier League, there's a lot more athletes than there are footballers. There's a like the the artist footballer is it's different now. It's like it's like how in comedy you gotta like graft and hustle and do other things and you can't really be a lazy genius. Like it's hard for players who are like that. Like a Raquel May would in the modern Premier League, not a lot of clubs would take a chance on him now. Like, yeah. you know, it's um it's a it's a different style of play, that sort of slower <laughs> artistry. You can find room for it, but you still gotta like press a bit now. You can't have passengers anymore, can you? I th- I, it's changing because we so we went to watch Morecambe. I think you've seen it. There's a video doing the rounds at the moment of the Morecambe under 13s in lockdown, all juggling with toilet roll. Right. And they, they on, mate, they look absolutely world class. This is it, man. <laughs> <laughs> and like this, it was like this is not the like. So I, a lad I know played. He played professionally, not for long. He, like I promise, and like each. So the video went up on Facebook and he commented going, we never did this when I was in the academy. <laughs> it's like gone are the days where the biggest lad played, the biggest lad who could kick it the furthest played at centre-back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was it. That was, Eng- that, was English, yeah. that was English tactics. That was it, yeah. It was basically like, yeah, it was like uh, basically like playground rules. Whoever's artist is captain. With your dad on the sidelines going, get rid of it! If in doubt, get it out. That's the phrase That's I most it. remember from being a kid playing football. If in doubt, I, get it out. I Terrible used to have advice. A, I used to have a bit on that exact premise you've just said, Rob. When right. I was like 17 and started, I had a whole bit on my dad, my big fucking Welsh dad going, if in doubt, kick it out. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck does that even mean, mate? Yeah. That's terrible well, advice. So any- where my mum and dad live, there's like a playing field at the back. And I'm sure they think I'm a wrong gun, but if I'm ever if I'm ever at my mum and dad's over the weekend on a Sunday, I'll just stand out the back and watch the dads. They're fucking crazy. I watched a kid, his dad was screaming at him so much, he ran off the pitch and just climbed up a tree. Wow. <laughs> and wow. his dad his dad was stood at the bottom of the tree going, Get out of there, you're being weak. You know, that's what I've heard though. If he as a father, you're watching your son who has no ability. Oh mate, I'm prepared oh, for that's it. what that's what I'm, my friend dad has to I, do. Yeah, probably. I am fully prepared for that, man. Like if 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 I have a child and they vaguely fun. take after me, they ain't gonna be a sports star. Like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm just I'll I'll, I'll be ready for it going like a okay, drama for you, I guess. You theater. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You theater. Hey, it's over hey, there, mate. Hit hit here's a book. You'll be reading a lot of these. Um <laughs> yeah, I, that's got to hurt as a as a father, in it. Just well, yeah, you, you've you've got to learn to be funny to survive now, son. Maybe I'm afraid. That, maybe that's why my dad wasn't around. He just couldn't face watching me lose at youth football he was like I'm, I'm done with this he could see where it was going when i was three it was like it was like this lad's not got potential i'm gone uh like, <laughs> I like my, my <laughs> like when i was a kid right so i played in golf for nesborough celtic my hometown nesborough i played in golf for nesborough celtic for a couple of um for a little bit when the team first started because i was the lanky one so it was literally like degan was saying it was like on body shape was- I bet it was like being the high school quarterback in Nairsborough. <laughs> no, uh, no, like, very but much. You the tail. Very, very much not. <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about an under tens league here, guys. So let's Sorry. you know class it up. And <laughs> I, I, I got no. In fact, yeah, I started at left back because I was the only left footed player, despite being taller than everyone. But then I got a straight red card for kicking someone in the face in the penalty area, the first one ever in the league. Thank you. Got moved in goal and then got moved out of there when we were ten nil down in a game, <laughs> and like we we ended up losing fourteen nil. 
But I, uh, yeah, I got subbed off because I was uh, I was about to cry. <laughs> Rob spent the second half up a tree. Basically, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I knew from an early age that like I really tried as well when I was a kid. I really wanted to be a footballer. I really practiced. I'm just really shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone had a football dream. I mean, looking back now, I didn't realize how hard you had to work to actually make that dream a reality. Now you get to see and say, okay, you can apply this and that to become a good player. By that time, you just watched it off the TV and thought, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> yeah, just go kick a ball against the wall for a few yeah. hours. I'll basically yeah. be Dennis Bergkamp <laughs> yeah, at the basically. end of that. I didn't realise the training and the ability you had to have. To yeah, man. Foot being a footballer, man. Like, it's not the one I'd choose. Like, if I could choose any job, I'd definitely be, like, a rock star before a fucking, uh, like, footballer. Like, footballers, you get drug tested. Fuck that. <laughs> I like <laughs> that's the main thing for you. Well, yeah. Like, genuinely, there's no job in the world I want more than smoking weed. <laughs> like, always in my life, if there's ever been a drug test for a job, I've just been like, well, I don't... I'm not doing that job then. <laughs> like, Can- God. Do you like um? Because I I I uh, I mean, there's no way for me to say this without come across like an absolute loser here. But I, like I I also enjoy it, but I can't do it like before like work like if before a gig, I could not do it. Do you, you just don't, do, can man. you manage it? <laughs> well, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, no, I told you. But like, do you? Do you? Yeah, do it, like, sometimes, and like I'll have like a little bit. Like I don't like getting like blazed before a gig because then I'm just a bit vacant. But like if I just yeah. have like a little bit, because like uh, I'm ADHD as fuck, so it just calms my brain down a bit and just like um... you know, that vacant feeling sometimes, though, man. Sometimes you it's good go though, man, when you let a thought wander. Yeah. yeah, you just let go, man. You're just like, yeah, I'm in the zone right now. Yeah, because everyone, man. everyone always says like, like take your time, speak slowly. And I remember the one time I did do a gig after I had a joint, it was actually, again, even, it was stayed. He was like, have you ever done it? And I was like, no, I've never, I don't think it's for me. And he was like, then how do you fucking know? <laughs> <laughs> and That's I was how like, he fucking gets you. That's yeah, totally. how he gets you. He's done and he had this shit little, to me. And he has this little, like, fucking weed, like, vape head thing. He's like, I think tonight's the fucking nightmare I've that got we, we yeah. learn. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. So, like, I take, like, like, two or three puffs of this thing, and I'm like, nothing like i'm fine and I, so i go on stage and like as soon they're as i was saying like as well they they really are and as soon as i was on stage, just fucking everything went and i was just so slow i think i was doing like 10 minutes but it was like 20 and then i came off and the first person i saw was just stayed and he was just looking at me going yeah it's not for you man <laughs> and since then i went yeah no i'm not gonna touch that i'm not gonna fucking touch it again <laughs> The first time I did the story stayed, I did I did Tremador Nights with him. So, oh fucking yeah, amazing. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. So the first time I did the story with him, this is what he literally said to me. You right from me? Pay attention, you're gonna learn something tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Incredible. I fucking That's love it. that man. I love that man. Like, yeah, he, he told me that he told me that uh, he had learned something from watching me, and I was just went like, "Ah, oh, thanks, man. That's awesome. I've obviously I've learned loads from you." And he just went, "I fucking know, man." <laughs> <laughs> he said that yeah. so casually as well. Pay attention, kid. You're gonna learn something tonight. Yeah. Was, yeah. First got- time, first time I opened for him, he was like, "Now I want you to do 20 minutes, but you're not you're not gonna do that." And I was like, "I can do 20. I've got 20." And he was like, "All right, fucking, I want 20 minutes." And it was at the Salford Lowry. I'd never opened for anyone to tour before. I'm um, not embarrassed to say, didn't go fucking great, right? It wasn't it wasn't necessarily... Was it in the main my... room? No, no, it was in the B room. Because I remember there was a, something... Ah, oh, fuck, who was it? Something tells me it was... I can't remember. But there was another comic on the, the big room. And I remember that being like at stayed going, all right, I fucking... Hopefully I'll get to Omen's level or whoever it was. Uh, but he said to me, he was like, you'll never do... T-. He was like, I want you to hit 20 minutes, but you won't do it. I went on, didn't go great, and I came off, and this straight away, just this, the brutalness, but also hilariousness of Steve, came off, and he's just there, like, shaking his head, and I'm like, all right, and he just went, fucking 15 minutes. <laughs> Incredible. You yeah. shaved five off the clock, man. Yeah, I know. I was bad. For me. Uh, was my, bad. My, my first ever <laughs> 20, my first ever 20 was supporting Chris Ramsey in Newcastle at the stand, a uh, secret gig with Jason Cook MCing right? in Newcastle. So yeah, Jason yeah. goes, murders. 
murders. Yeah. Like, I've, at this point, I have never seen anyone murder like this. Like, this is my first ever 20 minutes. I'm watching this guy, like, fuck it. it the room's... And then they're like... And like, oh, yeah. So we know why we're here, right? We've got my good mate, Chris Ramsey. But first... <laughs> Oh no, not uh, what you want, man. Nah, like he, he, he didn't, he didn't like totally throw me under the bus, but there was just that energy and of just like I come it's out just... and like I just wasn't, man. I did my 20, 20 minutes in thirteen and like oh, I just remember the feeling of flailing. You know, just that feeling where just when you're really new as well and you've got no skills and you don't really yeah. have another gear to go to. And like opening is a different beast Woo! and a different skill right. entirely. My first, my first 20 was opening. Right, I'd never done a 20. Yeah. Right, some of this stuff was like I'd written it the last week, you know, and done yeah. it once at an open mic. And like, I'm, the, I'm, I'm just... It's a beautiful room. It's a room I'd kill to be in now. But with yeah. that level of ability... Oh, <laughs> like it was Ramsey exactly was really nice about it. To be fair, I've always liked Ramsey because he was dead sound about it. I was like fucking sorry, and he was like, hey, it's fine. But, you know, he was just really nice. So fair yeah. play for uh... he, had... he knew he knew that was the best thing that could happen for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not it's not affected him what I want. It's not like you're gonna come out and the room's gonna go. Nah, we don't even want it now, Chris. We don't even want it now. <laughs> yeah, got me. I, I supported Ramsey once, and he had a go at me because I. When I went out, I told the crowd, I said, because they were all there to see him. I went, listen, if you're good and you tolerate me for 20 minutes, I'll give you Ramsey's phone number at the end. <laughs> and you can, like, text him how much you enjoyed the gig rather than... To, and I could feel... <laughs> as soon as I said that, he appeared at the side and I could feel the fucking eyes burning. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to do it. But when I got to the end, I went... Just get him on site. I think it's a good <laughs> tactic. Yeah, that's went, a great listen, move. Obviously, obviously, I can't give you his phone number, but this is his registration. And I did. When I came off, he was like, "Why have you given the registration?" I was like, "Mate, your registration is C Rams one, <laughs> and you parked in the car park. Everybody knows that's your yeah. car anyway. No one's walking past it, going, oh, fuck, he's a fan.'" <laughs> <laughs> he's a fan. Wow. You know what? And that's 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 what a comic would, because um, the, the main comic doesn't want you to smash the gig to the point where he can't fucking get off. So I, th I think that's the pussy move, man. Like, get someone good to open up for you and fucking ride the wave. Like, I, 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 uh, I, I'm all about that, man. Like, I respect comics who do that. Like, I think it's cool. Like, fuck it. Like, if you can't manage following someone who anyone at a gig where everyone's paid to come see you, get out of the game. What are you doing? Yeah, you're like, the name on the fucking ticket. They've come to see you. Like, uh, I've heard stories about veteran comics who set up the opener guy. I remember, I think it was Sam Kinison or someone who was performing at a particular town and the rookie comic was there and he told him to just trash the sea. They love that stuff, just trash their mm. sea. So he goes on and trashes the sea and of course, it doesn't work. Yeah. He comes off, Sam, Kinison, Sam Kinison goes on and goes, can you believe that guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he just rides the wave, you know? Yeah, but I don't think I don't think he was like a nice dude. No, he wasn't. <laughs> you know, the, the, I think he had quite a bad cocaine problem. You know? It's uh, like <laughs> it just shows that it's precious to everybody. Doesn't matter what level you are, you do not want someone upstaging you. You just don't. I don't give a shit, man. Like I'm, I'm like I'm not doing competitions anymore. Like I hope everyone on the build does really well and everyone has a really good night. I'm not competing with anyone. Like, but yeah, I suppose it is a bit different when you're like when you're on a build because like the audience, most builds anyway, yeah, they're, aren't they're, really there to see. Yeah, yeah. like it's not. Yeah, they're it's here the to night see out with like comedy. a partner. It's yeah, not yeah. the event that going yeah. to see fucking yeah, yeah. Jimmy event. Carr is. Like, yeah, you yeah, go yeah. see fuck yeah. Like, yeah. it's a but different... Event, you don't want Dave Chappelle opening for you. Do you know what I mean? What's the point in you coming? Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Like, yeah, but like, to be fair, if like, I, I would consider like, I would consider that a free hit. If someone's bought a ticket to see me and they've got to see 20 minutes of Dave Chappelle, anything I do is then a bonus after that. No, <laughs> yeah, but you don't want, you don't want oh, your yeah. show with yeah. your ticket to be yeah. the bonus. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I've just got to watch Dave Chappelle. I don't give a shit, man. And like, I'm got, getting all the ticket money. Him. You've I'm... got to pay him, Rob. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, I'm, I'm, I'm making all the money off the box office, mate. I'm getting a cut of the bar. I'm, I'm... Yeah, I'm... <laughs> I'm doing a DVD tour show. I'm not booking anyone who I think is good. <laughs> oh man, I did when I like when I did like my hometown show. I booked Simon Lomas, who I hate following because he like he rips in a really different way to me. Um, but I did it. It was great. Like, I'm just not a pussy. For my special, he did he did amazing. Who did you have, man? Like, Kai's mic. 
cut his fucking mic. <laughs> Who did you have, sorry? Travis J. Oh, nice man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was just, he destroyed. Yeah, so you didn't go gentle there. You got someone good. I know. I Well, yeah, I didn't. I know. I, I was At the back, I was thinking, why did I book this guy? <laughs> He's doing too good. It but is yeah. a balance in that, doing it. It is a balance in that. It is, it is, because I knew he would I knew he would do so well, the room would be warm enough. Mm. You know what I mean? You don't want it to yeah. be too cold. That's what I want in a support if I'm if, if I'm having one. Like you want it just Just warm. do the job. Just yeah. like just like, make him can, laugh. like do there's the job, n- yeah. but not yeah. no, fucking there's, crush. No, there's no there's no there's it's no too much laughter. It's so, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to any of this, man. Like, I hate it when people are like, are like, oh, that comedian went a bit, you know, did a bit much. He was a bit. No, nah, like, fuck it. Like, be as funny as you can all the time. You are on stage always, and like, it's just like, there's not too much laughter ever, like ever. It's not done. No, I do believe that if you're supporting act, you should do that. Nah, hammer it. Pe- pedal to the, the floor, gig. hammer it. I don't think you should go into the gig thinking this is my moment. I think you should like, I'm gonna support it for this guy. Yeah, yeah I kind of, I, I, I kind, I can I see, I see both sides, and I, and I, fifty uh, percent agree with both. Like I'm with Rob. Of, of course, it's a gig. You shouldn't yeah. be in your head going right. I won't fucking kill like I usually do. Tonight. Yeah, and like what an arrogant but way also, to go into a game. Also, but also, yeah, exactly, <laughs> hey, exactly. Gareth, but the way also, you did that prep talk was hilarious, right? I'm not gonna kill like right, I I'm not gonna fucking straight up kill tonight. <laughs> but also, you shouldn't. If I was like. Wrecking. I won't name names. Right? But I was Feel free to. And I'm not gonna. I was doing tour support for a comic once. Nah, I'm not even gonna say that. This is live. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm out. I'm out. Boo. I've had one pint of beer and I'm genuinely thinking I'm just. Nah, like, yet. look, right. Look, I'll be honest with you, mate. The, the viewership that this show gets, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rob. I told my mum about this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell your mum about this, man. But tell her I said hi. <laughs> I just feel like I don't know. It's like supporting singers. You know when singers, the guy in the background, tries to hit the highest notes and you know show that he can flex his. It's like, well, yeah, what's in the point here tonight? You know, I yeah, I do, I do kind of agree. They're not there for you. They're just no. not there for you. Yeah, so like, you. yeah, so you're like a bonus. So like, it's a free hit. Go hit it as hard as you can. Fuck it. Like, make some new fans out of them. And like, you know, I th- I think that's great. Like, I I. I would want someone doing that before me. I just always try and just Rob, fucking be as funny as I can. Rob, I was, I'm, I'm definitely in the Rob camp. Yeah. Okay. Just got to fucking smash it, innit? Yeah, but you, to be you fair, get, to be fair we have worked it quite out. nice. We have worked it quite nice. It is split in the middle quite yeah. nice. It's, it's not on the screen people are watching, Gareth. You're watching, oh, right. you're watching a different layout to everyone else. Like, oh, thought, shit. Welcome to my first Zoom call with Gareth. Um, I thought, oh, fucking sorry, that I thought this might be the fucking layout of the fucking thing. <laughs> That's what I'm seeing with my bastard eyes. The funny thing is, when I've, I've been to so many shows where the opening act comes on, who's really, I went to watch Chris Rock, Chris Rock one time at Hammersmith, and his oh, opening no, comic was really good. And people are so always pleasantly surprised when the mm. opening act is good. Because they can't seem to think anyone else can be good at comedy. I know. They think there's like, like one like, comedian. You know, why are you not on TV? Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, there's so many good comics who you'd be so surprised would actually make you laugh. And you'd be like, wow, I, I didn't expect that to come. Yeah, yeah, people are so shocked by live comedy when it's good. Even like, even when it's not uh, like um, at that, that level. But like, yeah, the dude's supporting Chris Rock. That's like, Chris Rock's number one. <laughs> this guy's right underneath that's yeah. really good like we'd all kill like all of us well i would cut off a bollock to support chris rock like i'll support him in a fucking oil rig in the middle of the north sea <laughs> i don't give a shit like yeah like this is a, a yeah they don't realize they think that you're just some guy they found on the street who's like ah, oh. like, yeah. get one of the ushers see if he can give it a go yeah. that was good how long have you been doing this 20 years yeah. like, <laughs> but i've never heard of you have you been looking for new comedians <laughs> Or have you just been watching? Heard. Have you just been watching three comedy specials a decade, yeah, like most it, people? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. do you know what you should do it next time. How long have you been doing this? Just started this morning. Yeah, yeah. well, I really love that Rory Scovel special where it's called Rory Scovel so Try Stand good. Up for the First Time. So <laughs> good. I love that, and it's so good that special as well. That like, whole bit me, on like, the frisbee, fucking mate. The whole thing's me. amazing. Like, genuinely, like I am, um, like I think there's. 
I think there's two sort of camps in comedy where people think it's either dying or it's the golden age, and I think it's the golden age. I think I think there has never been a better time. Obviously, outside of lockdown, like, but in general, there has never been a better time for comedy. There has never been more better comedy being made. Like the standard yeah. is better. Like just like the 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 level of like inventiveness and create creativity in comedy now is just always going up. I love it. Do you know what as well? I've never, I would say, so pre-lockdown, the 12 months before that, I've never done so few, like, poorly attended gigs. Yeah. Like, everywhere I seem to go, there seemed to be a real, like, a genuine crowd there. Yeah, 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 yeah I agree. <laughs> yeah, I had, like, a re really good time all around the South last year, so it was a really different experience for me. Because, like, um, again, like, you sort of get locked into these sort of, like, bands of just where it's easier to travel to, don't you? Yeah. So like, I was on the Southern Circuit for a year last year, living in Brighton. Loads of amazing gigs down there. Loads of great gigs. Like I was just constantly going into little towns and just there being just this beautiful gem of a gig. Loads of them. Hastings had an amazing one. Like um, just all the, all these all these little towns on the coast, all the way along. Loads of beautiful little gigs. It was wonderful, man. I really loved that about it. And like London's got some absolute fucking belters. London has more gigs I dislike, <laughs> but like there's a. Uh, the you prefer like um. Like a big audience, or do you prefer the intimacy of a mate? But I think I like a club. Like my ideal for like the best rooms, I think is like 150. So like top secret, hot water, like uh, Comedia Brighton. You like those? Those are my favourite rooms. Like club clubs. Top secret is more than 150. Well, so whatever. It, I don't know. It's like however many it is, it's great. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you mean? I mean, like in terms of the audience, because you know some comics want to do arena tours mm. and stuff like that. Do you, do you, do you, would you do it? Would you want to? Could you see yourself in an arena? Nah, man. Like it, it doesn't. It doesn't see what I do. Like it's too like dirty and intimate. Like I think like I'd much rather do like, mate. We're talking about things that are never really going to be an issue for me. But I think I would rather That's do. That's not necessarily true, Rob. Not necessarily. Stranger <laughs> things fucking... have happened. Paul Smith's done arenas. Fucking any of us can. Uh, yeah, no, mate, you're, fucking, you're 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 special to set like ten k or some shit, right? Twenty five thousand actually. Fuck you. That's no, fucking. Karen. That's fucking right. pure. Yeah, exactly, sure, exactly, man. exactly. And I was impressed with fucking 10. So 25 <laughs> is no, amazing. It's great, man. It's doing, doing yeah. really well. And like, look, like, well, I'm, yourself down, bro. No, I'm, I'm, look, yeah. I'm certain I've got a great career ahead of me and I'll be doing good things. But like, I don't think I'll be All right, no, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Go back to that one. <laughs> but like, I, I'd rather do like a few nights in a, a place I like to think. I'd like, I think the ultimate like career is to get to like what Chappelle does, where he just does what he wants when he wants. Like, yeah. he'll turn up at a pub in Bristol for an opening of it. And then like, you know, just. The point of being successful is freedom, surely. That's surely the, the the aim. That's why you want money, is so you can be free. So, like, for me, like, I just want to get to a point where I can just do what I want when I want with no one to tell me. Like, so just make it... This is like a Primal Scream song. <laughs> I look like I, I could be in Primal Scream. <laughs> Man, like, it's like, yeah, how about you, Fumbi? Is that, like, the aim? No, no, I can't. I, I mean, it's, I, I like the intimacy of, of like... I like that room, you know, where it's just dark and it's just people squashed in the same space. And you're Proper high risk off. stuff. Ooh. <laughs> I want all that. I want that Corona shit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I like the, the, when you have a small room and that, I don't know if you've ever done Koo Bar in, um, in Leicester Square for 99 Club. I don't know if I have. It's in the basement of a gay club, which is, you know. Um, Convenient whatever. for you. Yeah. <laughs> Very convenient. Two birds, one stuff. <laughs> um, Prince Abdi no had birds. a good night. Prince <laughs> had a good night about that. He was like, I was doing, you know, new, new material at this, you know, um, gay club. And I was coming out, my friend saw me and he goes, oh, listen, what, what are you doing there? He goes, I'm just trying new stuff. <laughs> and <he's> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, but that room has a basement and you stand in front of them on a, like a stage, like a small stage. Mm. But when the last- well, I'm aware of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> So, so he has a microphone. And there's a microphone. Uh, and like you, and microphone you say funny running. things into it. And yeah, people yeah. Are, are people there? Yes, they there. watch and there. laugh. There's a host, <laughs> you know. But when you when the laughter comes back, hmm. you, you just feel you feel like you can do anything. Yeah, man. Like when the, although when it doesn't come back, you feel like I should do something else. Mm. <laughs> but those little rooms are when you fly in it. Like that's when you can get like really free and just like go with stuff. And that's when it's beautiful, isn't it? Like oh. yeah. Fuck, I, I love to appreciate new material nights for that. Love them, man. Like, Deacon, nothing... do you ever do like new material nights? Do I ever do them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, yeah, as many as I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, like it's like the one place you can actually be a, a proper comic. Because it's just well, there should be no. Pre- I used to smash new material in that because I was so you know self conscious. Then I realized I'm not learning anything. Oh, just like, go and do your bits. Were you that cunt? <laughs> oh, fuck no, me, is. man. You I fucking knew that, that pre material. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's bad. bad. With a notepad oh. still. Oh, let me just yeah. check what I'm saying. <laughs> Here comes another oh, killer. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, well, so there was this meat right? van. Uh, <laughs> hey, hold on, bro. You get to top secret. It's new material now, right? Oh, it's There's bullshit, man. people in there. The first Comic Con goes on and does his greatest hits. You're in the back, like, I'm not going out like that. Be better, be better than him. Fucking, you, you can. Have let him do that, and he's not learned anything. He's mm-hmm. not got better. He's not mm-hmm. improved. Right. He's got mm-hmm. nothing new out of that night. You fucking, you can. You yeah, can. you're right. It took me a while to understand that. And, like, that energy of new stuff can kill. Like, yeah, that, yeah. that energy. There's, but sometimes, like, the first time you say a bit is the best it's time the, you ever say it. Because like, I, I subscribe to that. Because you riff it. Million. You riff it, and you say it from the chest. And, like, you mean yeah. what you're saying. And, and then it's got tell. that funny behind yeah. it. And because you're excited about it, there's something yeah. to just, like, that energy why do you transmits. Think, why do you think every comic at one point has tried to grasp onto that? Like, at some point, you'll say something fully rehearsed and you go oh i don't know where that came from it's because that one night that you did say that mm. i mean it was off the cuff it was a fucking incredible moment it never That's works why we again all try to recreate never, no, never, never works again never. let it go i know like anyone that goes oh what was my arm doing there you fucking know oh, i hate that shit <laughs> oh, uh, th- th- i was having i was doing the sex oh this isn't how yeah, i do yeah. it yeah <laughs> What, what no, am I doing you, there? Do, you do it like this, you sweaty I little mean, virgin. Fuck off. Yeah, I'm saying all of this. I've definitely done all of these. Oh, we all have. We all, all have. Look, I'm not. Someone will reply with like YouTube footage of me when I'm yeah. like fucking 23 <laughs> yeah. doing all of these things. So, like, I'm, yeah. uh, you know, the, look, I feel like I can judge now. But honestly, if I saw myself when I was an open spot now and they like that me asked me for advice, I would say comedy is not for you. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I, want to, I want to ask though, right? Fumby, yes. when, when you do those new material nights, do you like? Do you finish on something tried and tested? Um, well, I always just said, I used to say to myself, I've got like seven, ten minutes. I want to do a bit that I, I need to get this line out or this one that works. So I start with something that gives me a platform, but I just keep going until I end. I don't look for an ending. I just, I know when time is up in it. When I've, when I've, when I've kind of choked it out. But I start with something that gives me the trust of the audience, and then I can just give myself a chance to come. I think that's fair. That's like sandwiching it, yeah. 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 All right. No, that's all right. That's sometimes. Don't get it wrong, though, Danny. Sometimes I do close. With, you know, if you if you need to get up, you know, you just pick a nice closer you had. Bit but, nice, uh, nice closer. Yeah, I sometimes but, yeah. treat an. I feel like I treat an audience if I if you know if they've been good and my new stuff's been patchy. Sometimes at the end I'll be like, you know what, you've earned this, and I'll do like three minutes that I know actually works. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Good support acts my ass. He said, he said you've earned this. Okay, you've been such good sports tonight. I'm gonna give you some good material. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah that. That's arrogance. That's arrogance. Right, you've met me at my level. You get a treat. You get a little prize now. Yeah. For... Yeah. Right, I see audiences as fucking cattle, mate. <laughs> <laughs> They're just shapes and noises to me. Uh, guys, like, this how is... much do we miss those shapes and fucking oh, noises? Mate, there? Ultimately, I'll ultimately. I'll never complain again. I'm missing jungle. Shut right? your mouth. <laughs> yeah, in, in ten seconds flat, like at the first night, Fumbi's out. He's going to be calling the crowd trash. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. He will walk through the door and be like, "My first gig. This crowd's trash." A hundred percent. I, I you know bet you all I the just... money in the world. I don't understand how the first gig we go back to can be anything other than sensational. I just don't understand. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, I think for for them as well though, yeah, because we'll have missed well. it, but they get to fucking be out, and it'll be yeah. such a night. I yeah. agree. I think it will be. Yeah. I think it'll be great. If you bomb great. that night, or if you can't get it, quit. Together, Quick. Yeah, it was never for you. It was yeah, never exactly. For you. Yeah, it's you like if you can't get laid the first night out after this, <laughs> like <laughs> throw your dick in the wait. ocean. <laughs> Mate, that is all I'm holding out for now. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, honestly, when we uncage Deegan, there is going to be just a vaginal holocaust across York. It's going to be. You've got to sow the seeds during the gig. You know what I mean? You've got to start saying, listen, we're having an orgy after this. You've got to throw in the seeds during the gig. Yeah, yeah we're, not gonna, we're not doing that compare joke of, oh, later we all get naked. It's like, no, later. <laughs> Straight up. Right. Yeah. Yeah, We're turning yeah. the lights off and yeah. shit's going down. Right. This I've, is got, my... I've, got, I've got nine months worth of backed up cum. <laughs> Right, 
Like, because you know, there's like, there's a, there is a little bit of cum you can't get out yourself. You know, there's a little bit, like, there's a little bit at the bottom of the balls someone else has to get out for you. That's why you there's have incels. There's a little bit at the bottom of the balls. Yeah, that's that the science. Someone else has to get out for you. I don't know what the Jesus. science is, but it's true, isn't it? Right. You, I you don't can, know what the science is. But you but can, you like, wank forever and you're still going to be, like, horny. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I think I get it out. You think you get all of it out? I think I get all of it out. I'm sorry if that's like a so boast. If you, if you, I'm sorry if, if that's you, like a weird boast. If you never had sex again, you'd be like, well, it's all right. I can do it myself. And it's fine. No, no. Exactly. Because a little bit of the poison from your balls <laughs> stays in you. Because cum is poison. Cum is poison. It is. That's why we need rid of it. I just want to say, guys, just don't use the line. I've got nine months of backed up cum. That's just not <laughs> <laughs> the deal. I'm living with my girlfriend, man. I'm fine. Like my cum is not backed up. It's you know, if, if anything, better than ever. We've got spending more time together. <laughs> I've got to go. To, genuinely, right? I've just got a text message. I am currently late to my uh, my brother in law's uh, fucking Zoom chat. Uh, I'm gonna have to change gear so hard from this conversation oh, to time. talking to my mum and my nephews in like two minutes. Mate, yeah. tell, tell your mum about that last bit in your balls. It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mum, oh, mum, don't you think there's always a little argument. bit? This fucking jokester much. He didn't think that there was a little bit in the balls left. There's always a bit in the... Hey, nephew, get him in here. What is he? Is he nine? Get him in. He needs to learn. Uh, Remember, there's a little bit in your balls, son. <laughs> not yet. There's none in there yet. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, uh, like guys, this has been fucking great. Like um, all of you, like we've done fucking ages. Like, but uh, I've just been enjoying it, mate. It's been just fun. So like, uh, let's do this again sometime. Like, come back on, all of you guys. Like, before we go, um, like we'll go around and like just plug anything you want to plug. Tell people where they can find you, all that sort of stuff. So, so you, Gareth, man, tell them about yourself. Uh, I have a podcast called Too Much Information. Uh, if you could please go check that out, that would be great. I also do uh, once a week a funny little trivial take on the news. Uh, well, no, sorry, I take on trivial news. I don't touch any of like, the actual stuff. It's, got, uh, it's called Much Been Happening. It's on my YouTube channel. It's just Gareth Much on YouTube. You can find it there. But apart from that, yeah, fucking everyone stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you when we can see you. Thank you for that brave message, Gareth. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like the nation's morale is restored. Yeah, thanks, mate. Cheers. That's yeah, what I was yeah. aiming for. I'm going to start washing my hands. Thank you. You've inspired me. <laughs> Uh, but thanks for coming on, man. It's been a genuine joy. Oh, really I've had a blast, Rob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime like, I'll like, have to yeah, come back. Yeah, definitely come back on, man. Because like, I'm doing loads of these, and like, yeah, it's uh, good to have people who, uh, yeah, like, it's a laugh with, you know, basically. Not, I'm not saying that anyone of the guests haven't been a laugh. Uh, <laughs> right, uh, but uh, Danny, tell them about yourself, mate. Uh, uh, you know, just like find us on Snapchat, send us your pics. I'm desperate. <laughs> I've nothing. I've nothing else to plug, mate. I don't do social media. Yeah, but send him nudes. Honestly, like, please, like this is a genuine plea. I I have got nine months backed up. Yeah. <laughs> like seriously, send Danny some nudes. Get him through this drought. Like seriously, like. Uh... I really hope it comes through for you, mate. Yeah, no, I I have genuinely like send Danny some pictures of your vagina. Go on, you're not doing anything else. You know, there we go. I hope that works for you, Danny. Like, uh, I read out. Um, we put. We we well we put Will Duggan's phone number as the title of one episode, and he's been getting phone calls. So uh, <laughs> fingers crossed for you, mate. Uh, Fumby, tell him about yourself, mate. Yes, at Fumby on all social media, Twitter, and that. I'm dropping my special this weekend. Oh, sick, man! Oh, I've been excited to see it. What's it called? Black and British. Beautiful man. I'm following like... Robert Holland steps and going on that YouTube. Yeah, like is it? It's going to be on YouTube. It's gonna be on YouTube, man. It's the way to go, man. It's the way to go. Like that would be awesome, man. Like really looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. So yeah, you know, just gonna be plugging that, and then hopefully, man, just get back to live comedy. And we can actually see in the flesh again, guys. Yeah. yeah, man. I'm really looking forward to just being at gigs again, like properly, like so we can, like, you know, I'm actually least... gonna talk to comics this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is it. I might actually stay after my set at some yeah, gigs. I'm gonna stay after my set now. <laughs> 
I'm gonna I'm gonna watch people who are, I could mouth along every word of their set. I mean, I'm not. Fuck that. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. I'm not that desperate. Uh, yeah. But if you've enjoyed this, thank you for watching. Uh, like, we basically there's been a tracker going across the bottom. You will have seen it. But if you're listening to the podcast as well, uh, we're raising funds for the Trussell Trust. So they make they basically provide meals for people who desperately need them, and especially right now, that's loads of cunts. So if you've got any money, you're still working, chuck some to them. If you're not working and you're skin, chill out. Not everything has to be about extracting money from you. Just fucking, you've had a laugh for two hours. That's fine. Just like follow all these people and like watch my comedy special. Too big to fail. It's coming up in a second. There'll be a link to that. Uh, I'll be back on Wednesday. I've got uh, Paul McCaffrey, Simon Evans, and Sean Walsh. So, you know, a bit of an upgrade, if anything. Uh... <laughs> I was going to say, what? <laughs> yeah, Why was I wasn't on that ticket. <laughs> yeah, man, there's a reason. Uh, no. <laughs> I wanted to keep that one pure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so I'll be back on Wednesday with that. Um, I've got on my podcast and all that sort of shit. Just subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're on it right now. Just why not? Go on. <laughs> that's what. That's the plug I'm going to do. Fuck it. Uh, this has been Living La Vida Lockdown. I'll be back again. Uh, cheers, guys. Thank you very much. See you later.